have to nip into the container to get um, some bits to package while you're no testing, if you don't right. mind. Right, I think we're live anyway. So no, if, anyone, okay. if anyone joins in, I'm just going to carry on listing, not listing, testing consoles. I don't know. Did you see uh, I was on Zaheer's channel a minute ago? I got three strikes on Wii Bowling in a row. No, I didn't. <laughs> Yeah, they were as <laughs> impressed as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, when you said strikes, then I thought it meant on your account. So, ooh. Oh, no, 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 no. Not a good, not a good, you know, continuation of your week. So. No, Wii Bowling. That's my go-to game to test a Wii. But annoyingly, I've got three consoles. Yeah. And I can only find one Wii Sports. I was sure I had more. No, um... Andrew, um, he got a, uh, quite a few Wii's the other week, <clears throat> and it's like his um, his bit of excitement, you know, when he plugs it in to see if there's a game inside. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think he got two out of three. I've, I've done that on these. I, I just yeah. got a power lead and powered them up and did all of that, so I've got no yeah. exciting surprise to, to go. Yeah. But I do. Do you ever get them where these – Poxy doors are always broken. Yeah, the hinge, isn't it? Yeah. So I've got, I had a donation, a uh, like a knackered console. Yeah. So I've donated the uh, door. Off Can you not buy the replacement door from uh, Alibaba? Or what's the other one? You can, and I bought them in the past. But yeah. when you've got a knackered Wii, yeah. I just rip, rip all the parts off it. Yeah, see. you know the uh, hand controllers for the Wii, the the battery replacement covers. Yeah, um, some people do get a bit pedantic about oh, it's got to be Nintendo and and you know. Yeah. Um, Andrew tried for ages to source the replacement covers, and when when they came, they were like real cheap ones. Are they genuine Nintendo? No, but they're really good ones. Yeah. They they just where it should say Nintendo in that up in that oval, it's just blank. Yeah. Right. But they're they're really good because what a lot of people used to do, I'm sure you found this, is that they get those bat rechargeable battery packs, don't they? Yeah. Pack yeah. away this and put the back yep. on with the rechargeables in. And yeah. So I get the no end of these. Them rechargeable battery ones, I've had them where the batteries have been like basically knackered. And if you just, you can prise the battery pack off and you can just slide the door on. It's a fresh, you know, door. Oh, okay. So it's not all the, one part. You can rip the... No, the, the, the battery can oh. can pop off. Nice. Okay, that's worth knowing. Oh, I've got a Wii Motion Plus here as well. All right. Yeah, I've got loads of them covers, you know, the rubbery... Um, we condoms. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's fire this up. So what are you up to today anyway? Well, I'm having a rethink on listing. I know everyone everyone says, oh, list, 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 list. You know, I don't think it's com the complete solution. Um you know, when we go out buying stuff, it's like a drug addict, isn't it? You know, you get the high of buying it and then the downer of listing it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, you know, inevitably, we, this is how we end up with these death piles, you know, stuff just piling there. Um, but I follow a lot of eBay stores and, you know, some might call it stalking, but I just call it research, you know, um, just see what other people are doing. And a lot of these stores, have about maximum five, six hundred listings, and they do very well out of them stores. But the items are probably a little bit, you know, higher value, maybe. Um, I don't think the answer completely is pile up a store with two, three, four thousand listings. If you've got stuff that you had high hopes to sell, why is it not selling now, X amount of months later? So I'm going back and rejigging all my listings and just half the stuff owes me next to nothing i could put a 30 percent um promoted listings on half of it 
and still make good money and not be greedy with it and just get that turnover you know so that's what i'm i'm doing i'm actually in the process of um basically just blitzing the promoted listings because i turned it i've actually done a, a video of it plug plug um <laughs> i turned my promoted listings off three days ago and yeah. i've had yeah. zero sales i've had about sorry that's a lie i've had about four sales since um in in as many days and that's we've just you know i've been on the promoted listings and seen the graph and there's definite you know you've got your peaks and troughs and then turned it off and it went bang and flatline for three days yeah obviously yeah. obviously it's going to flatline there's no promotions but the rest of the store um just seems to suffer i've had pretty very little sales so i don't know i'm just playing about with it it might be complete nonsense and i'm talking gibberish but no i don't think so we we've got promoted back on now and yeah. i'm getting a lot of sales through it but going back to um volume isn't necessarily the answer we've never had a big store you know we, we've we've got more items listed currently than we ever had and that's only about 700 odd all right uh, but this, as we've discussed in the past there's so many different business models you know you've dabbled yeah. in the media which is all about numbers let's be honest yes so, yeah yeah because if you try to just find the home run media items it's not going to work you just can't no. find enough no. but um yeah some people do I, I know um george has a fairly low inventory but he deals in the high value stuff yeah you know so yeah. we get the sale and that could be the profit for two days needed mm. um we we always kind of sit halfway in between the two we get the best of both worlds we have the, the little stuff ticking along and then the home runs here and there yeah i mean that's more of what i'd I like you know you've got yeah. little 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 things bringing in the bread and butter if you like mm. uh, on a regular basis um but you do need them big home runs i mean i need a few more sullivan dvd sales that was that was me <laughs> and you, said, you said what was it was it bronwyn that found one like a few weeks later yeah about two weeks later she yeah. actually beat beat me she uh she she sold hers for 800. That's um, amazing. Well, I, did, I think she paid a little bit more than me, but it's still fantastic, you know. Yeah. Is that not still on telly over there then? Probably is on one of the networks, but uh, it's, I remember it when I was in the UK, you know. And it's just got a very big, it's one of the, it's like, I, I think it's, to the Australian nation, the Sullivans is what Coronation Street is to a lot of people from the UK. It's got a long-standing, you know, airtime about it. It's a lot of people grew up with it. <clears throat> um, yeah. Yeah, it's, um, what's the word? It's nostalgia, isn't it? That's it. I couldn't think, yeah. Yeah, nostalgia. I was trying to think of the word while you were talking yeah. about it. Pure nostalgia. Yeah. Well, a lot of what we deal in is selling nostalgia. Yeah, you're selling dreams. Yeah. Selling people's childhoods back to them. Yeah. That's some, war that's some warped fairy tale, isn't it? <laughs> <coughs> well, Tommy, Tommy's just mentioned in the chat there, at, at best he had 400 items in his store and was averaging 10 to 13K a month. There you go. Yeah, I could put the link in if Tommy wants to hop in. Are you, are you available, Tommy? I don't think Tommy's ever been on our channel. Yeah, I think he was on once when you was asking him about Streamyard a while back. Uh, maybe I'm very cautious about putting the, the link in the public. <laughs> but we'll go for it and see what happens. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you want to <laughs> please do. Whoa! <laughs> who's there? Who's there? At least with this, you do have the kind of back room, so you can kind of vet people before. You, because, um, yeah, I, I, I saw that clip you shared from uh, what channel was it? Was it? Um, Look, my Look, my mind hustling. The the Drew and Sarah over here, young couple, and he was too. I think he was too keen to click the. Uh, the button to invite them in the chat and yeah i'll help them up loose yeah don't, don't give people ideas bro, whatever you do <laughs> no, no.
You find many Nintendo Wii's down there. Was it as a huge a console down that way as it was in the UK? Yeah, they're they're, they're everywhere. They're, I mean, I've got about <clears throat> three three currently listed. I think for spares or repairs, just just to get rid. I think you know there are some people who buy them to do that. Strangely enough, um, yeah. Strangely, the one console I don't see a lot of in the in the charity shops over here is uh, is the PS3. I don't know why? Yeah, I don't see many of them. I see them at boot sales more than I've ever. Mm. I don't think I've ever seen one in a charity shop. No. A lot of our they... charity shops don't deal in electronics, though. Some do, but a, a yeah. lot of our charity shops don't even touch it. Yeah. Yeah, but there's a couple near where Andrew goes, and they they will put the use the Wii as the example. They'll put the Wii on its own in the shop, but they throw throw away the power pack. What? Yeah, because it's this electrical test and tag thing, and the chance of being sued should it blow up, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So, yeah, they'll sell you the unit. It's like giving you a car with no wheels, basically. But, it's just it's up to them you know and yeah it, uh, it it's surely not that difficult to get someone to just do a basic pat test on things really not no i mean not all they don't all don't the... test it you know they don't function test it to be covered just test that it's yeah. electrically safe yeah, yeah. yeah. And all they do when they pat test it is put the uh check stick the plug on the uh, the plug leads and make sure there's continuity through the cable if there's no continuity, there's a fault with the cable in the bin. And uh, yeah, I mean, the, the tip shop near me, they, their workaround is they have these yellow caution stickers that they put on saying, you know, you're buying this basically at your own peril. Um, well, that would be something if they could do that. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's get this thing working. That's yeah. not the one that's coming back, is it? Or is that your testing TV? This is mine. Yeah. Right. No, I, <laughs> I've still not heard back from my question mm. of what are you using for your TV signal and how are you connecting it to your TV? Covering all the bases of basically saying you do know you need to yeah. have a there's no analog signal, and I'm sure they've just had no clue what they're doing. Oh. Oh. I wonder if it's um I wonder if it's like pensioners, you know, and they're not they've got it for a caravan or something and Maybe, but I mean it. I'd ha I'll have to accept the return whether I can have this conversation with them or not. And yeah. if I have to foot that, that's like fifteen pounds to get it back. I'll, I'll lose the fifteen pound to get it out. There's nothing left in it, you know. Would you put it on Facebook? What to get rid of it? Yeah, try and cover some of your uh, costs. Somebody mentioned in in a when was it? I think it was last last night when I did that my terrible Monday video, and somebody was saying they don't they don't deal in TVs anymore for that reason because too many come back and 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 your profits wiped out with the return shipping costs. Yeah, but I don't know if I can sell this. Thought, go on. If you thought like that for everything though, you'd never sell anything. That's what I was going to say. And if I put it on Facebook, I doubt I'd get seventy five pounds for it or anywhere near. Mm. So you. You have to kind of factor that in, I think. From five to seventy-five, it's a huge margin, isn't it? It's worth the risk, I think. But it's just blooming annoying, and it's more annoying that they're not even having a conversation with me now. The return is just left hanging, and then not. So, how long is the return? What well, have they actually filed a return then? They filed a return. I have to act on it. I think I've got until December the third or something. And if yeah. not, eBay, eBay will accept it on my behalf, basically, if it goes beyond that, because we know how that works. Yeah. But I want to have a chat with them because they may not realize they need to get a set up box or something. Yeah, try and. They might be happy to just keep it. But yeah. Yeah. And after all, eBay does encourage communication with the buyer. That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I've got a return coming back at the moment. Um, on a set of uh, SingStar microphones with uh, four PS2 games, 
They yeah. claim they don't work on the PS3. So I said, are they working on your PS2? Yes, they're fine. They don't work on the PS3. I said, well, there's something up with your PS3 because these these are compatible. Well, they wouldn't listen, so it's, it's coming back. Then they left negative feedback. So I've, I got in touch with eBay, but I thought I'll do it through the live chat, you know, where you can, you yeah. know. So Anyway, basically, I got this lady to admit live on the chat uh, from eBay that in eBay's opinion because they accepted the return on my behalf and I said in in accepting the return are you accepting this is by remorse yes we are great so I'm screenshotting everything as well on my phone so I've got about 10 screenshots of this conversation and um, in the end I said well what about the feedback it, it's, it's, it's not in relate he claims I was sold a dud etc and Basically, eBay, eBay have said they will remove the negative feedback uh, when the item arrives and we'll deal with it as by remorse. So he's sending it back, so he's going to cost him postage and he's not going to get his money back. So apparently, oh, this is how eBay explained it. He's not going to get his money back. Oh, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I meant he's not getting his money back for the postage. Yeah. He'll yeah. get his money back for the item. Yeah. Am I yeah. getting feedback when I talk? I'm getting a strange no. voice from your end. I don't no, know. Fine, Let's know in the chat. Sorry, I've been ignoring the chat completely. I actually forgot we were live then. <laughs> I thought we were just having a chat. <laughs> oh, dear. Wow, there's a bunch of people in. I did drop the link in. Um, I don't know if anybody wanted to hop on. With, <laughs> Hit, with... Hitman UK. No, I, am, I can confirm I'm not BCP. <laughs> um. Andrew says there's a weird echo. Yeah, I was hearing almost like a, a roaring noise when I spoke coming from your end, but it's gone now. Anyway, that's working. You know, the um, the sensor bars on the Wii, do yeah. you somehow, I know I do, end up accumulating an absolute ton of them without games and consoles and and there's no real value. Yeah, there's no real value selling them on eBay because the postage kills it. Well, it does over here anyway. I don't Do you... tend to accumulate them, no. I used to um, part wheeze out, and like you say, these weren't worth it. So I'd do like mm -hmm. um, a Leeds bundle. This is going back yeah. a few years. I don't even know if that's worth doing anymore. Um, but no, I do have a couple of spares that I keep in case you. Sometimes you get them, and these have been like chewed by a hamster yeah. or something. You know what I mean? So I've yeah. got spares in the dark all the time. The um, you've got CEX over there, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. Just um, have a look on their website because they buy stuff, don't they? Yeah. Just have a just have a quick look at what they're paying for them over there. Because um, we're over here, I've sold I've sold them to CEX, a bundle of them and converted it into store credit and bought a few games and basically made more money on the games than they ever would have on the uh, sensor bars. Interesting. I've actually got a bag of stuff to take to them on the go because oh. uh, there's certain things that if you know yeah. what to look for, you, you can get yeah. in cash sometimes what you get on eBay for certain items. Yeah. Uh, so what are we looking at? We sensor bar. Sensor bars, yeah. I mean, I, I, obviously, I don't know what they are over there. But... Okay, official... We official wired sensor bar. We buy for two pounds voucher, one pound fifty cash. Yeah, I, that's about four dollars voucher over here. Mm. I'd be struggling to get that selling it on eBay because the postage would wipe it out. And then you've got your fees and everything. So I've been converting them for store vouchers and then buying games within the store and making the money that way, if you like. You know, just yeah. To be honest, if I had a, a, a load of them that I wanted to get rid of, that I'd probably do that. Mm. Two pound credit. Yeah. Buy some copies of Wii Sports to put in my Wii's because I keep losing Wii Sports. I don't know what I've done yeah. with them. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I do send Wii's normally into Amazon, but they you have to sell it as it's advertised on the listing, and the listing is the Wii Sports bundle. Yeah. You have to send it in as a Wii with a remote with a nunchuck and Wii Sports. All right. I've only got one, so that's going in tomorrow with this box full. 
the others. Mm. I'm going to make bundles up on eBay. The, the beauty of oh, eBay, yeah. so you can make your own bundle. So I just chuck in all the, the NAF software and make a bundle. Yeah, just pad it out. Yeah. I am so jealous of the fact that you guys can send into uh, Amazon. Hello, Sam. Hi. Hi, you're all right. I don't know how long you were sat there. I apologise. About five minutes, you're all right. <laughs> you were um, can I just answer a question for for Bert MC? Uh, he's, a, he's asking me what made me move to Australia. Uh, the gov uh, the government. <laughs> Do you mean no, they didn't. To Australia. <laughs> we um, we we just two young kids at the time, and we just thought it might be a healthier outdoor lifestyle for them. That was one of the reasons. There's many more, but this is the wrong forum for that. <laughs> Hi Andrew. Hi Lupe. Hi Peter. Uh, nice oh, yeah. to have you ever seen that program over there, Rod? The um, yeah. one called Down Under. I don't know if you've ever seen that. It's a, it's a UK the program. Watson. No, Wanted Down Under. It's oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a TV program over there. Yeah. Uh, one of the girls I used to work with went on it and um, she went over to Australia, but her youngest, well, it's not her youngest now because she's had another one, but uh, yeah. a middle child has got, um, it's got a condition that requires a lot of, um, it would have required a lot of treatment, so she wanted yeah. to get a visa for him. Oh, Because so, um, they were like, uh, they, really, they really wanted to move over there, like, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. So, yes, that... We're on the show, it was really good. Is that the program with I can't pronounce the last name Julia Swal? Oh God, I don't know. I've no idea. Yeah. I remember that show. Yeah, I mean we've been here ten, ten and a half years now, um, and I do remember some kind of show over there at the time. That was like. Have come back to the UK, Rod? I've been back once. I had to come back for my mum's funeral. Right. Um, but if I'm being honest, that. I went into my local pub and saw all my old local drinking mates, you know, and yeah. one of them, I mean, this was about three years. I'd been gone three years. Mm. And one of them said, oh, where have you been? I said, <laughs> I said I've moved. <laughs> he says, where? I says, I've moved to Australia. He says, oh, he says, I thought you'd been put in jail. <laughs> so I'm like, do, do you not read your messages? And, you know, but they were all moaning about the same things they were moaning three years before. And I'm thinking, shut up moaning, I'll do something about it. Yeah, you know? that's it. You, you get people like that, don't you, that just moan all the time but don't do anything about it. So. Yeah, and most people, I mean, we live in a community of people that, that take action. If You know, if you look around this community, we've all taken action of some sort yeah. to, to improve mm -hmm. our life or at least change it for the better in some yeah. way or get out of what we were moaning about. But I play cards with guys who just moan about their job every week. Yeah. And it's like, get a different job. Take yeah, a look. Yeah. A, yeah. A look, look. And it's like, oh, yeah. That's well, I it. actually went into work where I used to work yesterday because I used to work at a, in a pharmacy. So I had to go and pick a prescription up. And I went in and I just said, hey, are you all right? And I said, no, it's worse than ever. I mean, I left three years ago and the like. Yeah. It's absolutely horrendous. They're just cutting stuff. She said yeah. they're working on the bird bones and they're expecting them to do the job of three people. And it's just, they just look, they're running around like chickens. You know, yeah, that's, that's no good because yeah. you don't get the best out of people. No. No. Nice. to the uh, the ROC man today because because my my Monday fun kind of spilled over into Tuesday because I had to get the ROC out to my car. <laughs> but you uh, can't wait till tomorrow. Because <laughs> we have actually, it's a really good deal with our Barclays account. I pay ten pounds a month and I get full ROC unlimited Home Start cover. That's good. Full uh, unlimited um, holiday insurance, insurance on all of my cards. And it's like my, my old IA used to cost me more than the £10 a month I'm paying yeah. for all this whole pack. Anyway, that's beside the point. But I was chatting to him and he's going like, yeah, they're cutting staff, but they're taking on more jobs and more accounts and this. So we're doing more and not getting paid anymore, or less staff. I just yeah. stood there thinking, get out. I know it's yeah. not easy and we say it like it's easy, but. It's not everybody's cup of tea, is it? It's like my partner said to me. 
you know, I'll go home and I'll say, guess what I've sold today? Because I always say how much I picked it up for and how much I'm going to sell it for and that, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, yeah. oh, that's good. You know what I mean? He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it's good. And he always takes the mick out of me and he always sa he says when he gets home from work, oh, well, I've actually done a day's work. Oh, <laughs> I, I get this off my eldest lad now. I've actually my, done a bit of work today. <laughs> My, my eldest lad is 19 and a half, and he's um, well, the start of the new year. He'll be a third year apprentice carpenter. No, I join it. Yeah. And um, yeah, you know, he'll come home at night, and he's a big lad. And, um, you know, he's got into this habit of going in the fridge and cracking open a beer because it's, it's obviously it's mad hot at the moment. Um, and he'll sit down, and he'll, I get it's like watching watching me. 40 years ago, 35 yeah. years ago. And he's like, so what have you been up to, old man? You've been sat, <laughs> sat on your chair in the shed sleeping all afternoon. <laughs> uh, well, I have, actually, but I'm not yeah, telling you. <laughs> uh, yes, what of it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. So I've not been sat just tapping nails into a bit of wood. Yeah. Uh, so... But at the end of the day, that's that's why we do what we do because it gives you the freedom. If you if I don't want to get up at eight o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock yeah. in the morning and go to work, I'll not get up. Yeah. Remain. I, I usually am up, but yeah. I'm uh, up generally in the summer, which it is now, ish nearly. Um, I'm generally up around about four o'clock in the morning, half wow. four. But it's cooler. It, it's cooler. I mean, three o'clock. Well. Maybe two o'clock, three o'clock comes, and it's just beat. You know, this this it's a tin shed roof. It's oh, you're joking. Sorry, a tin roof shed. I should say. It was a double garage. But how do you cope in that? Because I know my mum and dad have a caravan in Spain, and they have yeah. the kitchen outside, and that is yeah. in a tin shed. And I went over um, in July this year, and it was absolutely boiling. I was I was yeah. in. In there, and I literally had to just leave the fridge open while it was in there because it was that hot. It, it does get to the stage where you're frightened to move because you know you're going to peel yourself off something. It's like, <laughs> you know, it's like this this chair. I did have a leather like, oh, well, leather is like leather look, you know, then PC, yeah. PVC things. But every time I lean forward, even with me my shirt on, you could feel this peeling action going on. You know, and, uh, yeah, yeah, just like. I, 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 yeah, I've got a big fan over there, but at some point during the day, all it's doing is churning around warm air. But you know, I know my mum has got like a tur it's not it's not tarpaulin. I don't know what they call it. It's like a, a, a black webbing, and that goes yeah. all over the caravan and the, the like yeah. the awning bit. And that oh, goes, shade, yeah, like a shade cloth. Yeah, it, it does keep um, the, the caravan itself cool. But they've even got aircon in there. They've got aircon in the yeah. actual caravan itself because it's that hot. So. I don't know how you're coping over there with that. Well, I, I, I won't say you get used to it, but you, you're kind of doing away. You yeah. tolerate it. I'll go in the house at about two o'clock or when I, when I come in and I'll, I'll take a load of easy stuff to list that doesn't need me coming back out. And I'll just park myself near the aircon yeah. and do that. But um, what I have done in the past with the, the – I don't advise you do it. I'm not advocating you do this. That's my disclaimer. <laughs> but on the actual fan, I've got a half meter diameter fan, and what I do, I'll you know the ice blocks you put in the freezer that you can put oh, in. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll get about three of them, solid, tie string around them, and dangle them over the front of the grill. And as the fan blows onto them, it, it's, it blows cool air off. It's like they call it like bush, bush air conditioning or something. So. <laughs> bush air conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Love it. Oh, <laughs> you dangle lumps of ice in front of the fan. No, no, no. There's two versions. The first version is you can get a, a bucket and fill it up with ice cubes and then have a fan blowing over the top of the ice cube. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah. There's the one I use, the, the plastic ice blocks you get in the fridge. You know when you oh, put yeah. in camping block. Yeah. yeah, we have them for camping. Yeah. Yeah. Well you dangle two you might in, when you come round to summer next next year, you'll probably see, see you doing a video of this cooling off in there. Cause, <laughs> but the, yeah, they just it cools it down. It just blows. Yeah, um, hmm. 
I know, like in my job where we was, they wouldn't put air conditioning in, and and that's the same as it's tin shutters all the way around, and they've got literally for the whole shop two little windows about that big. So, and I know it's not that hot in the UK, but it, it can, it does have its moan. We do, we do have our moan. Yeah. Um, I, and I, I, yeah, I, I remember that day. <laughs> And then they got, they got a unit, and that was like that. You had to put freezing cold water in the bottom of it, yeah. and it sort of like blew through. Yeah. But the, the problem was, we didn't have any cold water. It was bloody warm water what we were pouring in it. Uh, so what we what? did was, instead, we used to get medication that used to come in in ice packs that had to be kept cold. We were yeah. putting ice packs in there instead of putting like water in it, and it was working. Well, Shouldn't have done it. Friend, really. Friends of Trisha's, um, she has, she's on some weird diet that um, I think she's trying to lose weight, and you, you get your food delivered to you to maintain this strict uh, yeah. regime. But <clears throat> obviously, over here because of the heat, they drop it off, and it's got ice packs around it. Yeah. Um, they're all. Trish says, well, do, you want, do you want these ice packs? So she brought them home because this woman throws them away. So I've got a chest freezer full of them. And every now and again, I'll just, I'll bring a couple out. This is no joke. I'll bring a couple out, wrap them in a towel, and I'll sit on them. Just yeah. sit on them just to, just to try and cool down. <laughs> to, to get an out and put one on your head and put that on it. <laughs> My chair sometimes is wet through with them because the but and I'm sitting in a pool of water, it's which cool. is it's not me by the way the pool, <laughs> and um, yeah I'm not that old yet and but by the next day when I've come back in it's dried out so it's like there's no need to worry you know yeah, yeah. Uh, it keeps you cool it doesn't matter does it Rebecca says Nick needed a cool down last night I was not happy. <laughs> needed a wash down after standing in all that oh. The smell lingered as well. I mean, we did a good job of cleaning it all up, but that, it, that, oh, you know the smell. That's just, yeah. I've, I've got to say, I, I, it's happened to me. And no matter how much you scrub your hands, even the oh. day after, psychologically, you can still smell it. Mm -hmm. And it's, there's nothing worse. It's, it's the worst smell in the world. Uh, yes, Bert, I need, I need an elf hat on. <laughs> I haven't done much today. I'm making up for it. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> You're a night owl anyway, aren't you? I'm trying to get yeah. in front of the kitchen. What was yeah, that? Sorry? Sorry. I'm trying to get in front of the kitchen. I'm trying to get all my listings scheduled. Oh, and then right. Yeah. I've got so much on the next couple of days. I've got to go out with my mother tomorrow because she's been in Spain with my dad for nine weeks. So she wants me to take her out shopping, Christmas shopping. And then my partner's mum's come up from London. So we've been out tonight Christmas shopping and we're going out all day on Thursday to the Christmas markets, which is really, really good. I'm thinking, when am I going to get all these listings on? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I so, find uh, that sometimes people make the assumption um, that because we work from home, we can just down tools at drop of a hat, which we can and we yeah. have the choice, but it means effectively we don't get paid for that day or that work isn't paid forward and we, you know, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, I got a bit of a slight a slight dig off Trish one day last week or the week before. She had a day off in the week and she wanted to go up to TK Maxx in Toowoomba, big big city near us. And um, I said, well, look, I've got things to do. And it was the only day off. Well, OK, so we went up there. Then at the weekend, I think it was the Sunday, I thought, right, I'll catch up. And she said, what are you doing? She said, I've got to catch up. You know, I can't do it always. You know, I've... I've I've yeah. got to make some, some money. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Nick's probably in a in a better position than most of us because Andrea does it with him. So she, they're both both on the same way of thinking. Yeah. You know, if they yeah. have a day off, they've got to catch up a day later or, or some point in the week. But when you've got a partner who works a job, sometimes they forget that you're not as completely um, versatile with your time as they perhaps yeah. think you are. Also, I, I think. It's been so long since I've been employed in a regular job that I've forgotten what the clock off mentality is. But, yeah. you know, if you're in a regular job, you get your brain trained to like five or half five comes and you're like, yay, clock off. 
And yeah. I've lost that ability. I just kind of don't clock off. I'm kind of either working or thinking about working or thinking I should yeah. be working or trying yeah. not to work because I need to relax, you know. But the clock yeah. off button just doesn't exist in my head. And I think people don't understand that if they've not worked for themselves. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you there, but I, but I think because we have such a freedom, it's like, it's like if I don't want to get up until, say, 10 tomorrow, I won't be up. So I've got to, like, you know, grab a cup of coffee and And then, obviously, if you want to nip off and do something or you've got an appointment or you can just go and do that. So although you don't clock off, you can do what you want to a certain degree, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. I had a, sorry about that. I just had a missed call. It's one of these. I'm sick of being trying to be sold solar panels. Um, <laughs> but every they all they all ring from India. I mean, why would I have someone from India install my solar panels in Australia? You know. Anyway. The cold calling is just as bad over there as it is over here then. Oh God, yeah. I I tend to uh, take it as a bit of a sport these days now, though. But we're 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 live on air, so I, I, they they got away with it. <laughs> got off look. We used yeah. to get a lot, and I used to. Um, my mission is to make them hang hang up, right? Yeah. So I will start just having random conversations or telling them about what I'm doing or or yeah. trying to sell them some tat. Yeah. And, and just waffle on and they try and get in oh yeah but you know what about this pension scheme i want to get you on yeah and i just ask them questions and then ask them where they're going on holiday and then cut and then eventually they give up and hang up well they have so long to clinch the deal don't they and then they've got to move on to the next one yeah well the other one sometimes uh what i used to do our, our phone is right next to the telly so i just say hang on a minute and I'll just turn the TV up and put the phone down in front of it, and they can listen to The Simpsons for half hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But my mum used to do something similar. She'd say, "Oh, can you can you just wait a minute?" She says, "I've got a three year old, which she never had at that time. I've got a three year old, and I've got a hot pan of what boiling pan of water on the the stove." Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, no problem. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back in a bit. I'm just leave them. <laughs> That's it. No, well, they've gone. <laughs> Five, I ten minutes I later. Have, uh, when they ask for me, I just say, oh, no, you've got wrong number. <laughs> no. We get, a lot people, we get a lot of people coming to the door um, trying to sell us to, to redo our drive or new windows. And I found the quickest way to get rid of those is you say, I've just sold the house. And they don't know what to say. They just walk off because then, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't go anywhere with it, can they? Right, they're like, uh, oh, bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that works. That's a good one, that. Mm, remember that. Liz, yeah, Liz Queensland says, Rod, answer the call and then ask them to hold on for a second. Put the phone on mute and keep on working. It's hilarious to listen to them. <laughs> well, when, when, we went, when I went up to see Andrew beginning of this year in the Sunshine <coughs> Coast, um, we were driving along in the car and this, this there was a lady who rang and she was, um, I think she was of Indian origin. There was a definite accent there. And um, <clears throat> she was trying to sell me um, a, a data plan for the internet. And uh, I put it on speaker. I won't, I won't tell you what the com how the conversation went, because, but uh, basically Andrew was in stitches. <laughs> um, I was winding this poor woman. Up. In the end, she just hung up. She just had enough. She was, uh, yeah. Probably thought to wake. I'm going to try some other mug. <clears throat> so, how many have you got working up to now? This is number three. Very good. Are they, did you say these, these are all going to Amazon? No, because like I said, well, this one I found a Wii Resort, and that is an official bundle. They released a Wii Sports Resort bundle. So, if the sales rank is okay on that, I'll probably do that. This yeah. one for Amazon. So I've got one with a bundle of games for eBay and then potentially yeah. two for Amazon now. And then I've got a PS1 just there that I just need to check and that'll go in as well. But it's getting close to Christmas now. I don't have long to get the stuff up there because the, sometimes it backs up because everybody's standing their stock in. So yes. I need to get it in the, you know, off tomorrow. 
So how, many of them, how many of them Wii's are um, GameCube compatible ones that you've got? I thought always were. Is that not the case? Not that I'm aware of. The uh, a lot of the some Wii's don't have the door where you open the flap and there's the four. Oh, the late the controller. Mm. You mean the the mini version they did? No, there's a it's a sta uh, there's a couple over here which is a standard size Wii, but there's no door. There's no because they've got four ports, haven't they, for the yeah, yeah, yeah. controllers? Yeah. Well, some of them don't actually have them ports. Yeah, the four. Yeah. In there, but yeah. Yeah, some of them are standard size, but don't have that door flap. Oh, interesting. I've not seen one. I know they issued, they reissued the Wii as a like a. I think it was actually a top loader. So I assume right. they maybe took them out for that. Well, maybe some one of them. I don't know. That uh, okay. we talking before about the PS3. The one I've been told to look out for is the one with the four USBs on the uh, front, because that's the one that's is it backwards compatible or something. Yeah, isn't that the 80, I get confused, the 80 gig version? Yeah. 60? <coughs> I, I, should, I should know this stuff. I've been in buying and selling video games for long enough, but my memory's going. I just sold a, a couple of weeks ago a PS3. It was only a basic 12 gig one. Uh, I had one controller, PS3, and some pretty manky-looking Grand Theft Auto 4, I think. And... Uh, I got fifty dollars on uh, Facebook Marketplace for it, which is probably pretty good to be honest for that twelve gig PS3. Um, Can't find my cursor. There it is. Hooray! Three for three. Very good. Mind you, it's not giving me any sound. That's not good. Well, not another busted TV, is it? Is it tuned in? <laughs> TV don't work. TV don't work. <laughs> oh no, there we go. It just wasn't playing any music. I assumed yeah. it would be playing music. Yeah, it's all working. I was going to ask you, Sam. Um, who are you coming down with? Are you driving down, or are you? Um, I'm. Uh, I'm not driving personally, no. But I'm com coming down with Becca. Becca Bamba, who kicking ass debts on the uh, Instagram. She's driving. Yeah. Okay. Cool. We're stopping off at. We should get there about tea time because we're stopping off at Birmingham. So fingers crossed, if all was well. Last time we got a puncture at McDonald's before we even set off. So oh, I, I, I don't know if I read that on a post or I heard you talking about it on a stream. We did it. We uh, did it live from McDonald's, saying like, you know, we were waiting for the uh, punch repair guy to come, but uh, but it cost I think, I think it cost about hundred and fifty quid for it to get it fixed as well, which was a pain. Wow. It, she's got a cash car, so it was sort of like quite a biggish car. Well, in the UK, it's quite a biggish car. Uh, a, a cash, cash car, Nissan cash car. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a bit like um, a smaller version of like a four before, really. Oh right, okay. It's, Sometimes uh, they call um, different models different names in different countries, don't they? Because it might be yeah. down in Australia, but they call it something random. Possibly, yeah, and all um, the. I was just going to read, because we were talking about uh, Wii compatibility. Pixie Dust Gaming reckons uh, if the model number starts with RVK, it's not compatible with GameCube. All oh, right, okay. So, mm -hmm. one to remember. I, I assume if it doesn't have the ports, it's not. Is that another way of telling us? Well, I, I would, yeah, I would imagine so, but... Yeah. Because that... Yeah. Because the Wii's are completely different. I wasn't too sure of the Wii when it first came out. It was a bit strange, wasn't it? It was in a whole different arena of its own. Oh, I loved it. It really got me yeah. back into gaming. It was released on my, birthday, on my birthday in 2006, and we had a gaming store, so we had loads from Nintendo, so I got it like a day early as well, and then it actually oh. came out 8th of December 2006, and we had a, like a midnight launch thing, and it was my birthday. Oh, it's just happy times. Yeah, I loved it. And we made yeah, it. I found it. I found it too energetic a gaming system. <laughs> <laughs> you had to actually move about. Yeah, yeah I had to move. What, what's this about? That's what. That's what these were for. There's just yeah, none of this. Did he? They were they were selling out yeah. nationwide the consoles when it when it was launched, and then when yeah. we came out, that was like 
that sold out everywhere. And because we had the flexibility of being an independent, we would just take yeah. our stock off sale and put it on eBay or Amazon. And we made a fortune on certain games yeah. and, the, and the hardware. And we fit boards as well. It was it was like printing cash. How do you go with we fit boards now? I mean, I, I still managed to sell them, but um, they don't seem as... I, I tend to try and put we fit boards on when I get them, either just before or just after Christmas, and, and in the tie, in the description, um, work you know work them Christmas puddings off. You know, try and put them into a, a mental state of yes, I'm overweight through Christmas. I need to work it off. <laughs> yeah, here's the second place. <laughs> that that hi hey, hi. Hi, hi, Nick. hi uh, Sam. Hi, hi. Personally, fix this poll so only forty people can enter. I thought, I thought you were going to bed. Uh, yeah, I forgot I hadn't eaten, so I've just gone for dinner. No, there's there's an unwritten rule. If somebody in the reselling community is live, Andrew has to be up and live. <laughs> and active. So, you've got a bit of formal going on there, Andrew. Bit of formal. I I, I, think, I, I reckon Andrew went to bed. Found out I was live. Got dressed again. Came downstairs. <laughs> um, <laughs> on tonight, though. Pardon? Yeah, I have. I have. I, I didn't want to show them on Nick's channel, though. I, I've I've strategically positioned myself. I got all the way through to he is live without bringing him out. <laughs> How um, are you, Andrew? Anyway, I'm okay. I'm looking forward to our next challenge, where you know. There'll actually be a proper official vote in my Facebook group, and not uh, not this stuff on there. Uh, we've only forty people can enter before the poll closes. Running wow. a, a time of day when most of the UK is asleep. Well, you've got an alarm clock. <laughs> the um, the to, Nick should have won that one hands down. Anyway, his was much better than uh, either of ours. But I still was have. That, was that? I should have won what? I sh you should have won well, the other challenge with your entry. Oh, I, I think that was perfect. Yoda winning it. Poor little Red Yoda. Red Yoda. I mean, yeah. I was going to sacrifice it and video it, but there's a complete fire ban on at the moment. So. Well, no, I didn't see your Yoda. Have you got it there? No, to be honest, Sam, it, it <laughs> in, where I do the waffle from, uh, coincidentally, uh, tonight is with george ross a uh, little plug there um <laughs> it, i can't find it i don't know where it's gone it, it's just disappeared i see uh, nicks and i saw yours andrew but i mean for some reason i missed yours i'll have to go back and have a look in the video yeah. well. it's, it's gone down in folklore that thing <laughs> Basically, you know yoda is famously a little green kind Ooh, of yeah. corn type fantasy thing yeah rod's version of yoda is bright red <laughs> <laughs> right red and cut out of a piece of paper. Yeah, and also no it looks like Yoda. <laughs> no been sunbathing. That, that allegedly was better than a than a than a plastic X wing wrapped in paper. Probably would have been better. It wasn't than paper. It was toilet roll. It's newspaper. It's got half the Daily Mail around that thing. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> I should have oh, taken the paper off. I need to. I need to get that on Facebook so somebody will give me twenty quid for it. But. I'm going to see if I can beat my four strikes in a row record from Zahir's stream. Wait, hang on, it was three strikes. No, I got four. It's gone. It, it'll be five. You when he tells this tomorrow, Rod, it'll be five it. strikes. Rewatch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it, putting it on the big screen. How do I? I can't. How do I do that? I, if I click, click on your your head in the small box. <laughs> click click your head in the small box. Got to be careful. Careful, are you? There, there you go. go. I haven't got enough room to get back from the telly. Well, like, here we go. Oh, Excuses he's already. He's out. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay, no. we'll, we'll just count that one. Forget that. Hey, here you go, folks. No this is how to watch a TV screen be smashed. <laughs> okay, that that was just um, that was testing. Okay, I've tested the console. Now we can play seriously, right? Remember to wrap the uh, wrist strap around your hand. <laughs> this one that's hanging here. <laughs> okay, I'm going right to the edge of the rink, and this will be a strike. Spin. Oh, the spin's not working. 
Oh, it must uh, be faulty. It's faulty. That, this is faulty. Absolutely uh, brilliant uh, strike there, folks. No, the ball is not spinning. <laughs> right. I think, think, think something's failed testing there. I'm not sure it's the console, though. Not having this. Look at the spin on that one. That's the one. Oh, <laughs> come on. Give the screen a tap. Slow and steady. Spare. No. no yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's got it. Nine pins. Right. Okay, I was only messing around. Now we'll get a strike. <laughs> Here it comes. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. I got four earlier. I thought you said three. Four. <laughs> Hey, spare. Right, here we go. This is a strike. This this is the rest of our evening, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Get in. Oh! It, that's not a strike. A strike's in one go. You can't do it over 15 different goes. Oh, one. Pox. Oh, I even missed that. This is embarrassing now. Okay, this is a strike, right? <laughs> <clears throat> Are you impressed? Oh, I'll give up. Yeah. <laughs> Can't do it. I've lost I've lost my neck. How do I get out of this? There we go. <laughs> no, it's faulty. It's faulty. I'm sending it back. You need a bigger TV. Bigger TV? <laughs> I need one of those. Hang, on, hang on a couple of days. You might have a drink. Yeah, I have a, a fever coming back. Oh, don't me. Okay, we'll say that works. Now I've got to get the batteries out of this thing. I had to give up with electronics. I just, yeah, you know, I always seem to pick stuff up that's faulty. So, I'm rubbish. Yeah. It's always a little bit of a gamble. I think I've gone a bit of a sixth sense if I'm at a boot sale. When you have a chat with someone and you're buying electronics, you can tell if they're being a bit sort of shady about it. Oh, what, from the person? Yeah. Yeah. And if it's a family with all their kids there, kids can't lie or they're not very good at it. So you, you judge, you look at their faces when you're, when you're saying to them, does it work? Is it all working? And you look at the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I broke okay. that. <laughs> I've got an old Philco record player here that I need to test. God, that is all, isn't it? Yeah. Oh no, sorry, I'm thinking of Ronco. I remember them kids as a them adverts on the TV at Christmas as a kid in the UK. New from Ronco. Well, this one's <laughs> either late sixties or early seventies, I think. Are you looking at it now? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Well, I won't, I won't show it off though, because like nobody wants to see my 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 tack covered front room. But, no, uh, you're right. I'll, yeah. I'll put the record straight. Covered dining room. No. And I've it's, got an office as well. So mind you, you've got a cow shed as well, haven't you, Andrew? I have. And, and you've got a garage as well. I have. And uh, I'm slowly but surely moving all the uh, tats uh, across to the uh, cow shed, and then. Once it's there, I'm going to be moving out of the cow shed. So it's going to be a con I'm continuously moving tap. Why? Why are you moving it all to the cow shed? Are you going to move it out again? Because I'm moving it all into a shipping uh, container, a forty foot one. But it's easier to do it if it's all in one place. Where's that at? It's going to be down the road from me. Everything's down the road from me. It won't be much further, but it's half the price. We well, had a shipping container last time. Yeah, but that was a twenty foot one. It's half the size. How much stuff have you actually got then? Loads. <laughs> right, Kevin, that, th this was a one off poor performance. If you go over to Zahir's <laughs> channel and watch about near the end of that, I got four in a row, which is my normal kind of standard, honest. It was right. four. <laughs> I'm just saying peace. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm not sourcing. Although I say I'm not sourcing, I I did go do a bit of sourcing today, but I'm 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 restricted sourcing at the minute uh, until I've got rid of as much stuff as I can, and then um, cause I don't need a separate office basically because I haven't got the time to work from a separate so, office. 
How many items a week on average would you say you sell? About between 50 and 100. I know, I know you can't put a put a figure on how much stock you've got, but I know your store's just got up to a thousand, hasn't it? Because you put put a post on or something about a thousand. It's, it's, so, it's, so it's the biggest me store has been has been about eleven hundred items. Um, but yeah, it's um, it needs to go back to a thousand again because uh, it's people keep buying stuff. How rude! It's I'll annoying when you do that. Okay, I think we're on about 980 at the minute. So, so what are you drinking there? there? Fruit juice. I'm, I'm out with Ali tomorrow. We're going Christmas jumper shopping, so uh, I'm behaving myself. Although she thinks we're going out Christmas jumper shopping. I think we're moving stuff into the cow shed. <laughs> <laughs> Good we'll probably end up doing both. How do you reckon your cow shed's going to fare over the winter? You know, because you're going to get a lot of snow on that. Isn't you? Yeah. Do you reckon yeah. you're going to have a lot of problems? I'm not confident, but uh, everything's in boxes now that, well, any, anything that's got any value and isn't just stuff that's for the car boot is yeah. in really useful boxes. So those things will survive a nuclear apocalypse. Apart do you regret? From the ones that I bought the other week. Do you regret getting it? No, not 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 in the slightest. Um, getting that has enabled me to actually get my house back. Um, I've set up listing areas, packing areas, and stuff that I wouldn't have been able to do. I can list and process yeah. more stock now than I've ever been able to before. So uh, I have put an inventory system in place and all sorts. So the, the advantages it's given me have, have been brilliant. But um, I can get the same amount of space for less just without an office in it. And since I'm not using the office, it doesn't make sense for me to be paying for something I'm not, not using. Are these uh, the shipping container you're getting, um, is it ventilated? Brand new ventilated. It's got, it's got like, um, I can't, is it PRB insulation all around it inside as well? I think it's PRB. Yeah, but what? what I'm thinking is, like all the, obviously the two climates are different here and there, but, on mine, there's a, um, they call them a whirly bird, and it's like a, a, a ball, vent, vented ball shape, which spins round. But, um, like, it'll be cold in the morning here, then hot, and then cold. It's like the condensation, that whirly bird kind of just keeps the airflow going yeah. in it and, and limits the Because it's got this stuff in it that soaks up everything. So it's right. the same as the one I had before. There was never any condensation in it, never that yeah. no issues ever, and it was brilliant. And now they've said to me, oh, we've got 40-foot ones now, twice the size, and you, you can have one for about 60 quid a month more than you were paying for a, a 20 footer. So I was like, there's, there's no reason for me to say no, but I was like, I can't do it until March because I'm in a contract. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, the brand, brand new ones that they've just bought in, so it's, uh, I'm happy with that. Just going to say to the hills, I don't have a Mega Drive currently, sadly. I do have a Super Nintendo Mini, which I play on. I've got a Mega Drive for sale. <laughs> oh, have you? How much are you trying to sell it for? Um, I, I kind of researched it. I had it on for, I put it on for 60, but it's boxed and it's still got all its plastics and everything with it. Wow. So, and um, one control. It's, I think it come with two, but there's only one controller in it. So, but um, I've got, a, I've tested it and that. So, it's really worth really it. This um, this friend of of uh, Trisha's uh, husband, this debacle with the power inverter I bought on his behalf, oh, yeah. and all, yeah, he's actually got, um, and I'm, since this has happened with the, the eBay, it's kind of the conversations come to a, an end. It's like I've like hit a brick wall with him, but he's got in a box a uh, green. Nintendo 64. Yeah, yes. And they call it jungle green. Is that what it is? I'm not sure. I've I've seen a photograph of it. You sent me a photograph of it. He knows it's worth a bit, but he lives out in the middle of like bush, you know. And um, he's not got eBay. He's not savvy in that way, shall we say? 
Um, so he knows he wouldn't get full price. You know, if he, he thought it was worth 200, say, he knows he's not going to get 200 off me. It's probably only about 25. Um, so, <laughs> on a good day with the wind behind it. But, um, yeah, but it's a, it's a, a greenish coloured, all boxed up. It's uh, it's quite a nice bit of kit. Oh, you're in, are you, Mr. Mr. Andrew? In, um, the uh, Andrew who do the waffle with has just um, pops in on the chat. Oh, okay. I was just going to highlight this. Um, G. Crone, after several years of following your journey, just a quick message to say good to see you and Andrew looking well still. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Yeah, we're okay, muddling along, despite Mondays from hell. <laughs> and and battery, battery Tuesdays. Jungle green, yes. It was. Eric, yeah. That's Eric, one of the rarest colours. Sorry, Sam. Eric says, all this bus talk, bus talk from Rod, I wonder what my old girlfriend, Hurry Hannah, is doing now. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're welcome to hop on, uh, Drew. I'll, I'll stick the link in. We're just kind of hanging out and not really doing much constructive. I've I've slowed down my constructiveness. I've drafted nine items while I've been talking. Well, I didn't even start. I'm making no excuses. <laughs> I have listed ten items to, tonight, so I'm happy. I've already done my ten for the day. These are for tomorrow. <coughs> I'm cooking on gas. Oh, George is in it. Hi, George. Yes, you are indeed, George. You are indeed. Hi, George. I'm looking forward to it. It's weird because you guys, like George, you, you'll go to bed in a bit and sleep. And, and then he'll come on our show tonight, but yet I won't have been asleep. It's yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really odd. Just think how weird it's going to be when we do our challenge on Thursday. Well, yeah, I need to speak to you about that. Oh, yeah. okay. I don't know what... I know my lads... My lad finishes... They break up this Friday for the summer holidays, basically Christmas. And I don't think they go back till sometime in February. Oh, yeah. Um yeah. Oh, don't worry. I've got loads of things lined up for him. He doesn't want. He'll want to be back in school. Trust me. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, so I don't know if I've got to run him anywhere in the morning. So that might be a bit of an issue with this um, this challenge. <laughs> What's the new challenge? Well, Andrews challenge well it's not it's not a challenge that's not wrong challenge. andrew invited me on for drinking with andrew oh and uh, yeah and but andrew only drinks cheap scandinavian tap water <laughs> <laughs> i drink aldi cider that's no, what he said <laughs> but he won't drink guinness no i can't not 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 i've not been able to drink guinness since i was 17 years old did you have a rough night on it? I had a rough. I had a rough week on it. I, I don't do anything by halves. Uh, yeah, ever since then, it's just a taste of it. Go, go, even going around the Guinness factory and smelling it was enough to uh, make me. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. So you, you won't be. I find it too filling. It's kind of really heavy and. Yeah, it's, it's like eating a, eating a Sunday lunch, isn't it? Exactly. Or drinking a Sunday lunch, you should say. No, I do like Guinness. I prefer it on tap. But... You can get the extra cold one, can't you? That's really nice. Yeah. Extra cold Guinness. I do you like change the... But I can only get a couple of pints of it. Hey, everyone. Hey, oh, hello. How are we all? Good. Hey, working man. hard, mate. Working hard. <laughs> as always, Randy. As always. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm listing beer mats. Oh, I'm signing some of those at the weekend. Oh, jeez. 
<laughs> Not many, though. <laughs> How has this meetup turned into a fan convention for Andrew? That's what I, <laughs> I thought you'd renamed it, to be honest. <laughs> I've heard it's the Money Mantle meetup in Hitchin. <laughs> Are you listing a collection or doing a few individual? Are they rare ones or what? Nah, they're just just standard ones. They're X bar, so they're being used. And um, I picked them up at a chip shop. I think I paid fifty dollars for nineteen of them. So are they are they the big ones that go on the top of the bar? You're not talking about yeah, they're about about nine hundred mil. Oh, right. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. thought you meant the old card ones because oh, I had a, of them a year or so back. And some of the really early ones, and and ones that were of brands of beer that are no longer in production, or whiskies that yeah. are no longer in production, they were worth selling on their own just for a beer mat. Yeah, surprising. Yeah. But most. Are you, <laughs> you probably a little round thing you put your drink on. Yeah, that's yeah. what we call a beer mat. The car yeah, in, in Australia we call them drink coasters. Yeah, <laughs> the coasters. Yeah. 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 Over there, drink coasters. Oh yes, you know. <laughs> Oh, yes, you know, just a bit. <laughs> yeah, Australian renowned for being posh. Oh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> I'm just going to uh, change a light bulb in here. So, right, you make now, here, here answers that age old question How many Andrews does it take to change a light bulb? <laughs> well, two so far. <laughs> now, knowing how clumsy he is, this could be spectacular. Well, it'd be funny if he got zapped. <laughs> not, not live on YouTube. Man elect electrocutes himself. Like think of the views, Nick. Think of the views. <laughs> think of the views. Come on, Andrew, pull over. Oh, hang on, this is on the big screen now. Yeah, of course. Oh, okay. All of them <laughs> Superman pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> what a view! I. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hang on, hang on! I've just realised oh. this is still turned on at the mains. This is what oh. the internet was made for. <laughs> oh, the girls are going mad. <laughs> That's better. <laughs> Superman changing a light bulb. I love it. Bang! <laughs> 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 Oh, that, that wasn't very exciting, Andrew. Well, I haven't turned it on yet. Hey! Success. Then there was light. <sighs> right, how does that look on the... Uh... Mm. Oh, I must be, you can see my... You can see me now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was getting ready to do a... A live moon in then on Nick Show. It seems to be the rage these days. Yes, all the rage. I went in, I, went in, I have done one on my own channel by mistake. <laughs> I think that got uh, people very excited. These are these are B and M Bargain's finest Superman pants as well. Oh, congratulations, Mel. Looks like you've lost your car then. <laughs> She's already bought him a new car, though, hasn't she? Because she had that, um, look like a Vauxhall Astro, but I'm assuming it's a Holden something on there. Uh, Cruise. Yeah. I've got a Vauxhall Astro. It's been a good car, actually. Uh... Uh, best car I had was a Vauxhall Astro. Yeah. So we've had this conversation before, haven't we? It's the only car I've managed to get past five years of ownership without killing it. My, my second car was a Vauxhall Astra, and the guy that had it before was basically a boy racer, and he'd souped up the engine, had a massive exhaust on it, and it was it was a rust bucket, but it went like, you know, the proverbial off a shovel. It was amazing. <laughs> well, you've had recent experience of doing that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. oh no! So it wasn't off a shovel; it was off a shoe, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just, just when I'm about to forget it ever happened, <laughs> someone reminds me. For the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm, I'm looking forward to that being auctioned off at the weekend. Thank you, Aaron Stansfield. He's just uh, subscribed to my channel and uh, subscribed to yours, Nick. Oh, well, there you go, Aaron. If you're subscribing to channels, you've got Sam and Drew here as well. 
Nice one, Aaron. Yeah, everybody here has channels. Um, I'll put the links in once we're off air, but um, yeah, go and check everybody out. Right. So, look, Sam, you're from Wigan, aren't you? I'm a Wiganer, yeah. You're a pie eater. Pie eater, hi. I as a pie eater. <laughs> not, not literally. I didn't mean that in a... <laughs> no, <laughs> you, <like> that. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that to a lady. Ah, but she's from Wigan. She, I mean, well, oh, I'll shut her up. I'll just shut her up. Oh, <laughs> no, I had a couple of friends from Wigan when I was back in the UK. Played in a, they played in a band. Oh, they did, yeah. Actually, there was there was an ACDC cover band. They were they were really good. They were called, um, ironically enough, they were called ABCD. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Uh, yeah, they were very good though. But what about in Wigan where they're from? Oh, I don't know. Just Wigan. It's quite a big place. Yeah, so that's that that's all I they were nowhere near, nowhere near the pier. No, um, there is, well there's no pier now. The, the, well the, the, there's never was a pier in Wigan. <laughs> but the actual Wigan Pier nightclub, the famous Wigan Pier nightclub has uh, has been torn down now, so uh, unfortunately. Oh. What's that posh place near Wigan, um, just to the sort of north of it, called, um, does it begin with H? I can't remember now. The posh bit of Wigan. What posh bit? There's no posh bit of Wigan. Uh, there's some posh place to the north of it. It's like where all the rich people live. What's it called? Begin with H or something. H? Not in there. Can't be in there. No, that's not a name I know. Oh, oh. Gillian's asking, do they salt, salt the roads in the UK? Yes. Once we start getting frosty nights, the, the, the gritter vans come out and salt the roads. Oh, wow. Look at this. Drew gets giving his tea to the table. Hi, Hi everyone. Hi. 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 Is that a mince pie? No, 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 no. The muffins. Uh, oh. I thought it was Christmas time in your house. No, no, lemon muffins and raspberries. Uh, Are they homemade as well? Say again. Are they homemade as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my wife makes. That's why I'm so fat. So. Oh. <laughs> I'm so well fed. Oh. <laughs> Horridge. 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 Is it Horridge? No, it's not Horridge. It's not Horridge. Where are you? Not Horridge. Standish, maybe? No, not Standish. That'll begin with an H. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't necessarily have to begin with an H. All oh, right. So what was everybody's first car? I'll, I'll start. Mine was a Ford Escort Popular Mark I. <laughs> Mine was a 1300 XL Ford Escort Mark I. <laughs> nice. Mine was a Jetta. Whatever that was. That's Volkswagen. Oh, yeah. Volkswagen, yeah. Yes, that, yeah. Uh, it was a freaking tank. Yeah. <laughs> I had muscles this big for to steer the thing because it was like <laughs> power steering. It was like, it was if it was. Yeah, you forget how how spoilt we all are with power steering these days. Yeah. You used to have to turn around and I would just to turn the corner so I could get round. <laughs> Yeah, my, mine was a, a 1972 HQ Holden Kingswood. <laughs> Swagger. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, I feel like I didn't get a picture. Yeah. What was yours, I had, Andrew? I had a Metro, which I couldn't fit in, but that was my uh, first ever car. I passed my test in a Metro. <coughs> Car. It's it's Standish quite posh. Is that what I'm thinking of? Standish is um, it is there is posh parts of Standish, yeah. Um, there was somewhere there were loads of pubs in a row that I went and got very drunk, and uh, everyone was like driving Porsche and Mercedes and stuff. Oh God, I wouldn't say that. I'm sorry, no. It, it is it, Horwich is nearer to um, Bolton though, Charlie and Bolton. Yeah, no, I want Horwich because that's got a station in it, Horwich Parkway there. I think it's Standish. 
There's some past dress films I ended up going in, so I think I think we're standish. Yeah, I suppose, I suppose there is po there's posh parts of everywhere, isn't there? Like, there's posh parts of Ashton where I live in Ashton and Wakefield, but. Um, just trying to work out what pub I went in. Is it Hindley, someone says? I don't know, I've not heard of Hindley. Is that a posh place? No. Right now, then. No. Yeah, Nick, if you hit the button, then I'll bring up. Oh, yeah, I see. I see. There's Hindley and Hindley Green. There's like. Oh, wow. Ah. Yeah. So it was uh, the six zone. I think it had a. It was a 186, I think, which is 1,860cc. <laughs> and um, it's four speed. But you can actually put the back seats down. And um, oh, I'm six, right. and I'm six foot four, and um, basically I could lay in the back. So you used to have roof racks on, the, and you used to go surfing everywhere with it. So you just put the surfboards on the roof, and you just sleep in the back. We didn't have to worry about tents or anything. And at night time, you could just throw everything in the front seat, put it in the back. And it also had a bench in the front seat as well, so you could fit six people in the car. <laughs> so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. It reminds me of like it reminds me of what they call station wagons in America. When I was at worked over there in the 90s, we used to get uh, a taxi into town from the camp I was working on. It was always a station wagon, which looked pretty much like that. Yeah, yeah, we call them station wagons too. Oh, okay, cool, yeah. It reminds me of a Vauxhall Velox. Vauxhall Velox, blimey. <laughs> yeah, I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> my, my grandparents used to have a Viva, a Vauxhall Viva. That was when all of their brands were Vs, weren't they? It was Viva yeah. and Victor yeah. and God knows. Ooh, what was that? Oh, my phone. <laughs> it's for you. No. I'm probably trying to get you to buy solar panels. Yeah, it must be standish. Right, I'm going to attempt to PS1 now. I can't think it's a place that I've ever really, I mean, I've drove through Standish quite a lot, you know what I mean? But I, I can't say I've ever really stopped up there. I've been to the charity shops that were on the odd time, but they've only got, I think, they've only got two or three up there. But. I've been I've been very drunk. I've been drunk in most places. I, I told you before, I spent six months living in Wigan in the Mercure Hotel, didn't I? Yeah, that was central Wigan, though. That You lived, yeah. in, you lived in schools near the high rise flat. They're, they're a delight for singing in the morning. I used to hate that hotel as well. All the um, it used to stink of cigar smoke because uh, all the Americans used to come over and smoke in the rooms there and completely disregard the uh, legislation. Yeah. Do you know any um, like asylum seekers in there as well? Uh, not when I was there, anyway. Well, unless you can't. Oh. Gee, I'm still scared of my dad taking me to school in the A Reg Metro with tinsel up the aerial. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I think Andrea's first car was a mini metro. Oh, a brilliant car, just too big for it. Yeah. 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 It's appreciated in value. It's worth a lot more now than it was when I uh, scrapped it. I had a red one, a little red one, but. Um... You don't see them because they didn't survive. They all rusted to nothing. Yeah. It's like the old escorts. They all just rusted to hell. Mine, I'd had it for about a year, went for its MIT, and it failed completely on rust, and I had to scrap it within a year. <coughs> it was I would I would love to. I worked with a guy over here who's very much into um, um, the old Datsuns and, you know, them kind of uh, old yeah. Nissans. And... Andrew will vouch for this. The the price of cars and the car spares are so ridiculously expensive compared to the UK's. And I would love to go back over there and fill a shipping container up full, go around all the scrapyards and fill it up full of all the old Datsun engines, this, that, the other, all the Toyotas, fill it up to the brim, bring it over here. I would make an absolute killing but yep. there's this thing with uh, aquis the uh um what do you call it andrew the base the bio whatever it's called maybe it has to be peril wash before it comes in the country and things like that so they're strict in australia aren't they with uh stuff coming in 
Yeah, because yeah, we're an island yeah. nation, we, we, we don't get like a lot of diseases and stuff. So we're diseased. We don't have foot and mouth. We don't have you know half these diseases. All these other countries have got like rabies and all that. So. It's good that they're really involved with it, though, like, because, uh, I mean, I watch these programs on telly, but they're not always as the same, do they? But uh, you do get the feeling that they're really, really strict on um, checking people. Yeah, it's, it's just, I mean, I think if you go to other countries, just leave everything at home that's your food and eat theirs, you know, and you'll find similar food, you know. Yeah. A lot of Asians do that. They bring in all their weird food that they have into our country, like uncooked eggs and, you know, half fetuses of birds and yeah you know, all this other weird stuff they eat oh, and um, yeah. they don't know what diseases are on it and you know it could wipe out you know the, the chicken industry it could wipe, like you look at china now with all their pigs they got that swine flu and they've lost over was it two-thirds of their pigs or something so now they're, they're in a protein shortage because the pig meat's gone up to like 10 20 dollars a kilo so. there's a program mm. on it yeah um, which is all about the um, Australian airports and and people trying to bring stuff in and bring yeah, in stuff. and that's quite fascinating because the penalties are, are really high. Of course, they have to be to to mm. turn people off. Yeah. And people come in and they're just so unaware of the registration, even though they signed the form on the plane. Yeah, yeah. And they still have bags full of food and dead animals and what you name it. It's ridiculous. I worked, I worked with a Vietnamese fella over here and, and was sat in the canteen and he pulled out this, this egg and uh, he just crunched into it and there was a, a babe, there was a chicken in it, you know, like a chick. Oh. What they do, what they do, they, they, this is a Vietnamese delicacy. They, they, they let the egg fertilise up to about, is it 21 days or something? And then they boil the egg, and obviously the chicken. And he's crun, crun, I nearly threw up. And he's crunching it. But it's only different cultures. But I said to him, "Well, that's a bit stupid, because you, you've ate the food source. Why not let the chicken hatch, and then you can eat the eggs it lays rather than eating the food source straight away?" Because you know, anyway, but, but it was the smell. Honestly, the smell was something else as well. He was but told I, not to do it again yeah. by the boss. The, the biggest the biggest thing about their culture is their lack of protein for animals and stuff so they eat a lot of insects and and when a chicken forms it ends up being a higher protein level yeah and that's what they eat it. but i mean you can walk down the street and they've got grasshoppers on deep fried grasshoppers and triantulas because yeah. that's that's their only form of protein because they don't have they have a lot of fields and stuff but they don't have a lot of agricultural where they can grow cows and sheep and all that type yeah. of thing they were chuffed a bit when, bits when McDonald's opened, weren't they? I know, I know my partner, he, he, he works in different countries uh, throughout the year. He works for a company where they do timing events for athletics. And he once went to somewhere like that with, um, there's a few of them that go, but one of these lads they went, he says, I don't want to go to the, you know, the ordinary restaurants. I want a bit of culture, you know, I want to go to one of these, you know, eat what they eat sort of thing. So... Mm. They went, out, they went out to this restaurant and they asked for this chicken. Um, and when it came, it had its heads, feet, wings, uh, fur, everything on it. <laughs> they must have just like chucked it in the oven as it was and just dumped it on his plate. Oh, there's, a, there's a Chinese, um, <laughs> Chinese warehouse in Manchester. It's actually Middleton, Manchester. And um, it's a, it's called Ocean something, but it's a huge warehouse, and they supply all the um, Chinatown with all the, the the foods and everything and drink. And we went there one day because it's open to the public, and uh, we're looking in the, the freezers, and there's things in there you didn't have a clue what they were. And when you asked, do we, I, I kid you not, there was cow, uh, what was it, um, cow fetus. Oh. No, they act, they actually eat it. They slice it up, but you can't judge another culture because it doesn't. It's not in your cuisine. No, definitely not. But, but I mean, what 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 do you even serve that with? You can't imagine Delia Smith saying, oh, "I'm just going to rustle up some cow fetus and chips." No, you know, no, it's no, like I was just thinking that I'd go good with some chips. Oh, no. you would. <laughs> <laughs> Five dish of monkey brains on. Yeah, I don't think. 
Touch a bit of salt and vinegar on it, a bit of bit of brown sauce, job done. Yeah, there's some weird stuff in there. I mean, some of the Asian cultures where they they eat something yeah. virtually live, like they'll chop its head off and, yeah. and go for it while it's still oh well, yeah, it's beyond me that. No, nah, I couldn't do that. But you know, like, don't judge another culture. Yeah, but I mean, like I, I was brought up in the country, and you know, we used to shoot rabbits, skin them. We used to slaughter cows and sheep, and and now you get anyone from the city. Oh my God, you can slaughter a chicken! I mean, you know, kind of head up a chicken and pluck it and put it in the oven. You know, it's just beyond them because they're not exposed to that. I mean, where do you think it comes from? Where do you think your KFC comes from? You know, yeah. I think. But then these people on it. I think. I think what part part of turning eighteen, you should drive a, a semi truck or we big lorry, we call them over there. Uh, for two weeks, right, to understand the stopping distances. And then I think they should also work on the farm for two weeks to give them that understanding, you know, so that they're not just ignorant and just swallow all this, you know, stuff that comes out of the media about farmers and animal welfare. Like the farmers love their animals. I know they, they put them to slaughter sometimes, but, you know, their whole goal is is to protect and, and nurture them and, and bring them up to to be healthy as they can so they can make more money you know they're not they're not in it to be cruel to their animals and and, and this is where city people kind of lose it you know but i'll stop ranting so <laughs> no, that's fine. I, I grew up the first six years of my life was on a farm and uh no. you know my dad would do things like bring a if there was a, a deer killed on the side of the road he would bring that home and he'd butcher it and 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 Dog. use the meat. Yeah, um, I me too. Yeah. He'd go shooting and and rather than than waste the pheasants that these rich toffs had shot, they'd bring them home and and prepare them and and we'd have that. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. so I've seen it all. Yeah, bits of lead. Yeah, my dad used to go duck shooting too. And yeah, you munch it. Oh, hello. Yeah, I crunch all the lead. <laughs> yeah. Does yeah. does the urge still get your neck when you see a dead cat at the side of the road? Or? <laughs> thanks no i'm good <laughs> does that work in that playstation well it's it's stalling it wouldn't load fifa world cup it's loaded to the start screen of this but it's not loading up the actual track so i don't think so i'm gonna try another game <coughs> i'm just gonna go and get a, a drink um i think i need to put some water back in me <laughs> there is um over time nick the laser kind of loses it, it it's kind of power and there are youtube videos where there's a small trim pot on the circuit board that you can adjust increase the power but it becomes a project then not a not a profit so That was weird. Went in the front room, and and there you all are on our telly. Andrea's Hi, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. <laughs> right, let's see. I think there's something up with the laser on this. It's it's not probably reading past a certain point. We'll try golf, but I think. So that's the PS1. Yeah, PS1. I mean, I, I have a really good hit rate on these. Probably 9 out of 10 work with PS1. Yeah. Yeah. They're fairly bulletproof. PS2s I hate with passion, but... <laughs> yeah, this is annoying at the minute. I might give the little laser head a clean if it doesn't load this as well. Yeah, with, with the lasers, there's actually two lenses. The top lens is actually the focal lens, and the, there's a, a lens underneath that, uh, which actually then the laser sits under that. So it's like a magnifying glass. You know how you're trying to like burn something, you're going to get to a pinpoint. So right. the top laser actually goes up and down like that. And that's one lens, and there's another lens under there. And normally that's the one that gets dirty. Over time, too, um, as I was talking to you, but you weren't in the room. <laughs> I don't know if you had me on the TV, but... Um, there are YouTube videos, but it becomes more of a, a, a project and a profit. But, um, there are little trim pots, with trim trim pots, where you can actually increase the voltage to the laser because over time they start to diminish a bit, and then that helps it read the disc a bit better. But it's a lot of mucking around because you got to 
do it, test it, do it, test it, do it, test it. You know, and it's it's hardly worth your time. Yeah, I don't have something to do. You know, that, that's <laughs> a step too far. There's certain repairs that I can do. It, it's not. It's just clicking away now. It's not. Yeah, really can't, can't read the disc. Um, manually move the laser up and down because there might be something on the track. Oh, I did load. It just came up with the start screen. Let's see. All right. We're going to put Sam off for life doing electronics now. <laughs> nah, it's good money. It is, but it's just not my thing, to be honest with you, Andrew. It's um, it, bad it, luck. It, more like bad it, luck than good luck. <laughs> yeah, but if it's all around you, you, you create. It's like uh, you're leaving dollars on the shelf. You know what I mean? Oh, I'd regularly leave money on the shelf. I regularly go past stuff and leave money on the shelf. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's like it's that a lot of it, a lot of time, like big items. Uh, I bought so I bought a vintage nineteen uh, fifties ashtray. You know, an ashtray stand the other day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely beautiful. I couldn't leave it behind. I paid I paid twenty five quid for it, but they're going oh. for like over a hundred pound, hundred and twenty pound on um, oh. on eBay. So, and I thought, well, it's not an awkward item to ship because it's just a, a long box. So. Yeah. But that'll probably sit in my house now at the side of my sofa for probably the next six to 12 months before it gets lifted. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't leave it there. It's just... It's, yeah, yeah. Like, I will pick items up like that if they catch my eye and, and I, 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 I like them. So. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, I'm like that sometimes too. I think, oh, gee, that'd be really nice. And then you kind of think, oh, no, I won't list it. I'll, I'll admire it or use it and then... I've got loads of stuff that's hanging around my house that I bought to resell that's just, just yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I've got boxes and boxes and boxes of stuff that needs to be. <laughs> See, now it's running, but I've, I'm still not trusting it because it didn't load the other games. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that laser a little clean and, re and retry the other ones. Yeah. All right, let me go find some more stock now. So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if you can see that. Um. I saw that on one of your... Was you live the other day? It might have been on my Instagram. I might put it on there. Ah, right. Yeah. I don't know, but... It's very grand. It's wow. very grand. It's, um... that's, worth, that, that's worth like £100, did you say? Um, well, there's one sold, not here, it's sold in America, but it's sold for £120. And what is that made of, like, steel? It's it's, um, it's chrome, and uh, it's like, a, I don't know whether it's onyx or marble or something, the, these middle bits here yeah. are like a marble. Um, but it's quite nice, it's a nice thing. Kind of, is it lifted? Is it what, sorry? Is it listed? So I wasn't listening before. Is no. it listed? Is oh, it? no. <laughs> it's quite a little time to go. You still with us, Andrew? You're looking a bit dazed there. Well, I am. I'm just helping Tommy do a bit of research into an England away shirt. I'm trying to work out what year it is. Does it not say on the label on the inside? Not on a number one, no. Uh, Don Bro still make the England shirt. I think I'm not sure if my critical um, kit supplier. Can't remember now. I've got one upstairs, but it's got a different label on it, so I know it's not the same era as that. There's a website you can go on, and it has every international shirt of European clubs. I can't remember. About yeah, I can't years. remember. What, can't remember what website it is. Hi, Kelly. Oh, had feedback then. Got this little character sitting here looking at me that I'm bringing to the meetup, hoping he she will be popular. It's amusing me anyway. Now, Kelly auctioned off Mr. Tat last time. Ah. I, I meant to message Darren because Darren ended up with Mr. Tat. I don't know if he's. Uh, He's coming back because we were passing him around the community. Has, has, has Aaron just kidnapped him. <laughs> yeah, 
because I went down to see Darren uh, and Phoebe and passed him on, and I never heard anything else. So I don't know where he is. You'll have to walk him off. I asked Darren to bring him off. You know, see him off again to Jared. Yeah, I keep meaning to message him. That's what I'm saying. I'll do it now. Okay. Yeah. Well, wake him up. <laughs> yeah. Darren, it's important. Have you got a Mr. Tat? <laughs> you still got <laughs> I found the year anyway. I think it's 2010 slash 2011. Yeah, it's 2010 slash 2011, Tommy. So it's getting close to one one of the last ones then, according to uh, Nick K. He's just posted in the chat. Yeah, yeah, because Nike do it now, don't they? Hmm. Uh, so I've got some of the Nike shirts. So there's a Nike outlet um, not far from me uh, on a retail park. And every time, um, well, no, they, they basically have the England kit that of two years ago there going for about three or four quid. Mm. So every time I get some more in, I buy them all and sell and put them on eBay as a book listing for 30 quid each. Brand new attacks, nice little earner. Right, well, I'm going to say good night, guys, because I've done my, I've done my nine drafts now. So, I said uh, 10 before. I can, no, I've listed ten already. I've just done nine drafts for tomorrow. So just this, is, this is this is going up like the number of strikes that Nick did. No, <laughs> whatever. Oh. whatever. Oh. <laughs> Lovely to see them. Yeah, I shall see you Friday. Oh, see you. oh wow! Yeah. I'll see you Saturday. I'll see you Saturday, Andrew. Look at you. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Take care. See you later. Last time I saw you sat on that settee in that position, Andrew, a few weeks ago, that vacuum cleaner was still in that position. Oh, yeah, it's not been used since. <laughs> I don't even know if that one works. That's probably stock. That I've got to Me, here, here is, here's one for you. Me and Andrew have been um, compiling questions for, for George tonight. Oh, go on then. Yeah, we really, we really, really have. Absolutely. So we'd appreciate any extra additional questions you could perhaps think of that we could ask George. Sensible ones, Andrew, sensible ones. Yeah, uh, <laughs> whose name badge is he going to wear at the Hitchin meetup, considering George Ross's is already taken? Well, well that was yours, wasn't it? I, 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 wore, I wore his name last time, so he's. Uh, so I might do it again this time if he doesn't get there soon enough. <laughs> oh, you got the standard, haven't you? It's top five great flips, just top five oh, yeah, yeah. most wanted items. Um, <laughs> what inspired him to do YouTube? Um, that was me, by the way. Um, naturally, naturally. Yeah. <laughs> um, but if you're talking, George, you've got you've got a dig, you got a dig. You've got to dig down into the uh, the inner pieces of his psyche. How is it he can list 20 items a day but can't hold down a full-time job? <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that. That was a sensible question. He, I was watching his... Um, he did a live last night, George, with um, some of his sales. And um, he mentioned that um, his... His whole situation will be dramatically changing very soon. So I'm not saying any more in case he, you know, you have to go and watch his video for it. <laughs> uh, no, I know, it's, I know, it's changing for him. Yeah, yeah. I do as well. well yeah. I think that's what he's talking about. I won't, you know, help. he's building it up, so I won't say what it is. But if it's business-wise, I think I know what it is. 
Well, everything, I think, by the sound of it. He's got a few things changing for him, yeah. Yeah, he's got um, quite a few life-changing events happening. Why is he so obsessed with Jurassic Park? I'm, can, yeah, that's, I must admit, I'm a bit, I can't stand the film, personally. Um, why doesn't he think The Empire Strikes Back is better? This is why Again, he I can't stand the film. Right. If he could live anywhere in the world, where would he live? Oh my. What's his dream holiday destination? If he went abroad, would he still thrift or would he be able to take a break? Well, he answered that the other day. You know, you know um, is it this thing where you're doing 19 questions? Or am I might get it wrong or something that seems to be going around at the moment. I've not. And he said if he, if he won the lottery or he won some money, he'd still um, be, you know, doing what he's doing because it's, you know, it is well, what it is. So. When he came on, say, and here's our guest, Jude Ross. Yeah. Oh, no. Jude what Ross. is this Jude Ross? I see it popped up a yeah. few times. What? I can't remember how it started there. <laughs> it, it was somebody was, was watching him. On uh, was it car boot? Chris was watching him with the subtitles on. Oh, oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's he's right. sat in his car and he's got the auto um YouTube subtitles on. And he says, Welcome to the Jude Ross show, or whatever it is. He says, <laughs> The little subtitles called him Jude Ross. So that, that's it. He's Jude from now on. You can't get you can't stop it. Hey, Jude. Hey. <laughs> I've got some issues with that cookbook, uh, Eric. It's on my laptop that fried. I've got to find a way to get it off that laptop. You don't need the recipe for egg and chips, Andrew. I can tell you that. Can you? I can't. Well, it's egg and chips. <laughs> is, it, is, it, is, it, is it Tracy's in charge? Uh, I think Eric's got a fantastic question. Hold on. I'll try and find it. Oh. Hey, Rod. Oh, I was waiting for you to show that. <laughs> uh, um, that? There's a guy. Oh, what's it, Drew? Puzzle? Yeah, it's, uh, there, was a thing, there was a thing on our uh, Facebook group. Oh, get Ken Duncan puzzles used. You make all this money. And, yeah, there's no money in it. <laughs> well, there is a bit, but... Um, well, there is, but so so me me and Rod looked up the comps and they'll sound for like twenty bucks if you're lucky, you know what I mean? And we're like, come on, you know, there's no money in it. And then um, Rod was just had his wallet open, he just had to spend his money, and he was in an op shop and he saw four of these Ken Duncan puzzles open, <laughs> and me and him kind of vowed we'd never buy them. <laughs> he bought four, but he did sell one for twenty dollars plus shipping used i only i only paid two dollars for a beach yeah i bought this for four bucks and it's sealed though but mine's from 2004 so i've just sold this puzzle today uh, um, is that it, sealed yeah 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 cool i like the gibson I, 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 I honestly there. can't understand them i mean everyone's different but i can't understand the mentality of someone who'd want to sit down and do a blooming jigsaw so, You're never going to get that time back. I've had a few people who are like, oh, I'm buying used jigsaws to resell. And I'm like, like how do I te check they're complete? And I said, well, you can't because you, you, well, you, the only way you can do it is putting the, putting the puzzle together because if you sit there and count pieces, it's only an approximation anyway. You might have 1,005 pieces yeah. or you might have 990, and that's fine in a 1,000 yeah. piece jigsaw. But, yeah, people seem to enjoy buying them. So they can put them together and then sell them on. Uh, not for me. Aaron's asked. I assume that means how much for the PS One. Um, throw me, throw me a price that you're happy with. It's, it's as you've just seen. It's not loading all games. It loaded t one out of three, and there's something up with the laser reading. So it's a repair job if you want it. If you, if you don't have it, I'll just sell it as spares repair on, on eBay or, or take it to the boot sale and let someone have a play with it. Have you got much to go to your boot sale? Well, that's, I suppose that's a bit of a 
Silly yeah. question, really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I've got loads. Have you not? <laughs> yeah. Of course. Are your boot sales still running then? Um, mine ended no, right. I'm a fair weather boot sale kind of guy, so I'll probably wait till spring has properly sprung. We've got uh, until I go and stand in a field. <laughs> we've got one that's still running that'll run probably until January, and then it'll stop for lambing because that's a a thing here during the year uh, that stops. The only thing that stops our boot sale is lambing season. And then I'll come back on after the uh, lambs have been born. Otherwise, wow. I've got to do a 90 mile round trip to one that's opening over the winter, which I can't be bothered doing. Don't need to anyway. Well, I'm I'm not going out buying anything else. I'm 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 saying to Nick earlier on, I'm going to be just spending the next week rejigging the listings I've got already listed yeah. because I bought them and I thought these items would sell. What's the point in buying more stuff to list if it's just going to sit there? I need to get the stuff that's already on list gone. Good night, Pete. Pete's going to pop in and watch uh, George. Oh, tomorrow. yeah. I am gutted yeah, about that. I, I, I would have liked to have seen that. I'd have had lots of questions for George in the chat. But regrettably, I'm, I'm, I'm out getting my Christmas jumper for uh, Hitchin. <coughs> I've 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 seen what George is coming out. So I've got to get better than that. I'm like that's an impossible task. What you were saying before, Rod, I'm I'm really trying to push to to clear my backlog now. I know I say that we 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 purposefully work on a backlog and buy more than we can list in the summer to see us through, but yeah. it's out of hand. It really is out of hand. So I at least want to get it so I can have all of my stock on the shelves. That that's a start. <laughs> I, I really I'm a, I, I don't know how I mean as we're looking at your screen there now all around you you're literally surrounded by it. and I know you say you've got stuff in the loft and wherever else you've got it squirreled away and the spare, but, the spare room where the tea spilled <laughs> everywhere yeah. well yeah, and just yeah <laughs> I I get frustrated here and this is a double garage and I've got the shipping container at the side of me. Yeah. I just I don't know how you you operate to the levels you do. Well this with, surrounded in, in so much stuff, yeah. stuff. I know what you're saying. I think we've done it for so long that we're kind of used to it for a start. But also this is separate to the house. It is connected, but I can shut yeah. the door and this is yeah. This is the office. And then the spare yeah. room we can shut the door. <laughs> and then the rest of the house is is fairly clear. We, we well, we try and keep at least that the front room and the kitchen free of stock. <laughs> so we, we have we have living space. Oh, so the White House. Uh, I'm um I'm I'm planning on eventually getting my stock back into the house, but I'm going to board out the loft and get a big shed in the garden that I'm going to insulate and basically make into a secure dry. So a storage place. Well, we we've done all things. We, we've hired office and warehouse space. We've had retail shops where we've run this business from, and we've done it from home. And each have their benefits. But for us, the amount of money we save yearly on rent and rates exactly is huge. And mm. and also, the this is more secure, in my opinion, than having it off site somewhere. Um, so it works for us, but it, yeah, of course it has its drawbacks. And I have, I go through periods where I just don't want any stock. I'm done with it. You know, I want to just minimalize and all of this. And Andrew and I have both been through that recently. But it becomes a way of life, doesn't it? We all get into that kind of almost hoarding mentality, and you, you don't see it anymore. I step over stuff on this floor for weeks without moving it. It's like it's not. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've I've been doing that, and I've just come to the point now of I don't know. It's going out the house. It's getting properly sorted, listed. How, how many bedrooms are in your house, Andrew? Uh, three. Three double bedrooms. Right, so there's only you there. Yeah. Why could you not just dedicate one of those double bedroom rooms? To, to... I don't think you've seen how much stock I've got. No. I've, I've got 
yeah, I've got a, I've got a fr about four hundred square foot full of stock at the minute. I remember seeing your shipping yeah. container before you moved to the cow shed, and that was just rammed full. Yeah, I've got twice as much as that. Oh God, where are you picking it all up from? Because you you're working full time still. I got like I, every time I if I go out, there's just so much stock around that I can fill the car quite easily. Yeah, just. You know, I I know people struggle to find stock. I, I never have that struggle. I get loads of stuff cheap. Um, I go out, I went out for an hour earlier and filled the boot. And I was like, I I've got to stop now. I spent twenty five quid. Yeah. Um, Aaron, I've, I've seen the message. I've, I've made a note of your email, so I'll, I'll try and remember to drop your message tonight. And yeah, if you want the uh, half working PS One, then then you're welcome to it. Um. Yes, somebody's saying you can see floor. This was completely clear uh, day before yesterday, but I brought more stock down from upstairs, so I kind of filled it up. And one yeah. of the things, check this out, right? This is cool. Christmas is coming. Oh, we could. Oh, I like that. Brand new, oh. still in its cellophane inside. Nice. That's cool. I know. I haven't looked up completed yet, but I mean, God, this came as part of that van load of stock. You know, the one oh, about. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, go there you go, Andrew. You can trade it in for your scooter. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think, Rod, being a minimalist in this industry is a bad thing. I'm not so much a minimalist. You, you, you are. Well. Like, you seem you well. You always have floor space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how well, do you manage to get floor space? It's a skill. <laughs> um. <laughs> I think there's a few realities with what we do, though, isn't there? There's realities yeah. of you can't get the stuff in and get it out as quick as you'd like, and we're also opportunist, and we have to be opportunist to make the most yeah. of the stuff yeah. we're looking for. So you're not going to turn out an epic haul like some of the ones I've had in the last few years and turn down 15, 20 grand's worth of profit because, no. oh, I don't want the stock hanging around. So you buy it. Yeah. yeah. And you can't escape that. If you're going to be successful in, in how we choose to do things, you have to buy the stock when it's there in front of you. That's like you go in the car boot and you have a conversation with somebody and they say, oh, I've got about 100 more of these if you want them. You're not going to say no when you know it's making a 10 quid profit on each item. Yeah. You think about where to store it afterwards once you've got it. Well, that's that goes back to Dell by that, doesn't it? He who dares. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you've got to take a few risks in this to make the big money as well. You know, go for it. I, know, I, I, I mentioned the other day on to someone... Um, I'm uh, I'm hope hopeful of getting another storage unit very very soon, but the ones that are being coming up available at the moment are just full of, full of absolute junk, yeah, um, real junk. Is uh, that a picture to share, Drew? Yeah, you can share that. That that's my um, profit pile. Oh blimey! No, that's oh, yes. That, that's a ceiling fan. That's about six foot seven, the bottom of that ceiling fan. Jesus. Do you have that's, more stock than me? No. Oh, that's, uh, that's only half of it. Wow. Yeah, that, that's, that's just the stuff that's unlisted. Yeah. And that's inside the house. That looks like a regular room. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It's, it's our second lounge room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all my man cave. I don't know if you can see the X-Wing and my cabinets with all my Star Wars stuff and on the right there, yeah. So That was my bedroom when I went to stay. You better get that clear. Yeah, well, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is, that's next level. Uh, but, that's, I mean, you you, you got to do it when you do it, eh? you know. Yeah. So. I mean, but, maybe if, if I added up all of the stuff in the loft and all of Andrea's clothing overstocks, we might match that pile, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Where now, does Andrea store her stock? Well, she has an office. There's a rear extension on the house, which is like a sunroom kind of thing, and all of the clothing is stored in there. 
although mm -hmm. some of it's made its way into the spare room. There's about three crates in the spare room now as well. So there's overflow. Um, I was just going to mention, Tommy said, is it like white noise, Nick? I find myself getting paralyzed when I go to list, not knowing where to start. It can be like that. I'm, I'm getting better at it, picking a, something to work on and finishing it before I move on. My problem is that I, I get sidetracked and start another job before I've finished testing consoles, for example. I don't know what it is, but I'll, I'll start on another job or I'll start, you know, get distracted and then jobs just pile up and that's when it gets crazy. But, yeah. I just lift whatever I've just tripped over, basically. That's my approach. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I just start one and just work my way in. Yeah. Uh, Nick has killer items in back stock. Yeah, they're running thin, though. I've, I've sold off most of my really good, good stuff. <laughs> I've got loads of bolos that aren't listed at the minute. I'm looking at some. And I'm like, I really need to list that tomorrow. Um, the we two of the weeds are going to go into Amazon, and I'll ask top dollar, um, or top pound. <laughs> There'll be one going on eBay. I'm not sure what I'm going to price it out, I'm not sure the going rate. There's going to be one going on eBay with a bundle of games, um, so you can check our store out for that. But I, I don't know what the price will be, but obviously, I could do you a bit of discount on that one. The Amazon ones will go up, you know, Christmas Amazon prices, so. Yeah. And watch it says sweet pile, Drew. I feel a lot less guilty of my own now. Nah, don't even be feel guilty. It's an asset. Like I don't know, if say you break your leg, you know, you can keep listening to the cows come home. You don't you don't have to get out and about, you know, get, all all those things come to play. When it, when eBay falls off the planet like it did, um, you know, you don't have to spend any more money. You just keep picking your, your free stock. Yeah. Technique. I mean, that's all paid for 10 times over. You know what I mean? It's just, yeah. it owes me nothing, but I do have to list it. But I love shopping. That's the problem. I love, I love going. It gives me a break from eBay. I like getting out and going for a drive and just seeing all the different things and then see what you can score. And that's do very. You, <laughs> do you ever get overwhelmed with it and think, oh my God, I just want to shift all of this? Or not? Uh, yeah, yeah, I had that realization. I went out on Friday. I went up to Noosa, and then I kind of came down through Coolum across to Maroochydore and back again. And I stopped. I think it was 18, 19 hop shops. I stopped that. But um, the whole, I mean, back seat was about almost a foot and a half high with stuff, and the floor and the back had two big bins of stock. And I'm just like, I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta stop. This is so ridiculous. So, um, so it's safe to say that that finding the stock is not the issue, then. No, it's not the issue. But I, no. I mean, you know, Rod talks about the fear of missing out. If I don't go, what am I missing out on? Um, and I, I have that I try and have that tendency now when I go just to pick up, you know, heavy hitters. Don't don't pick up the the video games, but. But I picked up like six Wii games the other day for eleven dollars, and there was Mario Kart. I'm like, I don't know about over over there, but Wii Party over here, you can get about thirty five, forty dollars for it. It's mm -hmm. kind of like big pink kind of style Wii Except Party. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a bolo that one if you can find that. So yeah, for eleven dollars and you know, games are one hundred and twenty, I just ah, oh, well, I can't on that back. <laughs> so I was giving them up. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, the, the thing with that is you can't leave that behind because it, it's quick to list, quick to sell. Friend buy. That's, yeah. If I could just do that, I would. Yeah. But you don't so, find it every day. <laughs> I had a two, three months over the summer where I was just listing media and that was it. And it was turning over so quickly. It was great. Mm. But Demi Media contact retired. So I've had oh. to adapt. Um, I was picking up, I was paying pennies, literally pennies per game, and I was making them. So no, I'll quickly answer this because he wants to go to bed. Um, uh, what about your thermal printer? What brand and model is it? Can it do 6x4 Hermes labels? Right, I use a Zebra GK420D. If you go to most of my other videos, there's a list of all the equipment we use in our business, and there'll be a link which will show you exactly what, the, what it is on Amazon. Um, they're not cheap. 
but they are built like tanks. Um, I would recommend it, um, but it's not a cheap option. And they do do six by four. That's what I, well, this is what I use. Six by four labels, they do um, means perfectly. I use it. So yeah, like I say, I don't think the links are below this video currently, but go to most of our other recent ones and you should find a link to the printer if you want to go and have a look. Andrew? Uh, oh, hang on. Too, Drew, I'll, I'll say Drew. There's too many Andrews. <laughs> uh, just check your messages uh, on Messenger. I've just forwarded a message on to you from someone. Kevin, hi, Kevin, says, I'm just starting out. I have 20 items to sell. Is that a picture of your stock, Drew? A glimpse of my future? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Yeah, okay, I, want, I'm, I, might, I might do it. Now, um, I, I have a really good relationship at um, one of the local op shops here and I get on really well with the, the manager. And um, I, I normally get a lot of electronics and stuff in there. And then he, he showed me these, um, Beta cassette tapes, and I said to him, I said, "Yeah, look, beta tapes aren't worth much. It's the player, you know." What I mean? And then he showed me these other big fat cassette tapes, you know, something you'd use in like a studio where they'd feed into the big clunky machine or something, yeah. a channel, a, a professional news channel or something like that. Anyway, so and then he produced this. Um, now. So he, he, he said, oh, I've got this. And as he said, I would have sold it for a five, five bucks. And I said to him, I said, mate, this might be rare as. Now, there's a big marina in um, Queensland, Gold Coast. Now, Gold Coast is like Miami kind of thing. It's on the beach, big high rises, heaps of clubs. That's where me, Rod, and Bron went um, for our trip, Okay. Um, we did a we did a cruise around the, the, the local drag and everything, and um, basically this was in 1988. They had this opening, and they paid Whitney Houston a million dollars to play, and then they also got Frank Sinatra out the following week. Okay, now the thing is though that. Um, the the concert this is this is the Whitney Houston concert made by a production firm called Video Ten. Now it's a professional production of the entire show, so they've got multi cameras, um, and they've also got um, um, you know quality sound and, and everything else from 1988. Okay, now. The other thing you're going to stand to, there was no such thing as handy cams or, or anything like that, and yeah. you weren't a flash photography in those style of, of shows. So basically just sat there and watched it opposed to holding your phone up and recording it like they do these days. Why do you go to a concert? I don't get that. <laughs> anyway, you see thousands of phones just holding oh, up. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's the generation. Was, so, it, was it not broadcast at all anyway? Uh, well, I, I've done some research. It was never broadcast. It was never on live TV, so it's in a pre-production format. So this video has no um, no titles, no subtitles, no copyright notices, no no text on it whatsoever. That's just pure raw footage, so it's pre-production. Uh, I've looked up the concert basically. Um, I think it was on the seventh of January. I think it was, um, and I, I can't. The only footage I found was uh, I think it was. Clive James, you know, the Australian guy. I think he went over to you guys and did yep. talk yeah. back up over that year. A talk show host, or he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he did a little spoof on it type thing, but all the camera angles he had of the show was like their own. Like from the video I've watched, because I basically watched most of it, of, of her, her show. So now, obviously, she's passed away. Um, this might be the only tape in existence. There's none sold. Um, I've talked to Tommy over in the States, um, and he did a, a bit of research for me as well um, and said that um, basically nothing like this has ever been done before. Now, I, I did put it up on eBay for a stupid amount of money, and then Rod said, look, no, do some more research and pull it down, which I did. 
And um, I'm kind of in that situation with you and your 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 game. You don't know what it's worth because there's no evidence. And yeah. So I, I contacted um, Sony Music because Sony Music owns her the rights to all the songs. Okay. And they're currently, Tommy said that they're going to do a, um, it's like a, a 3D concert where they, they project her in 3D. And so this is going to travel around the world. So you can actually see Whitney Houston in 3D um, performing her hits. <laughs> so, wow. And, and that's coming up as well. So I've contacted Sony Music. Um, I contacted, he, he said also maybe get it graded, like PSA graded. Where you send it off and um, they grade it for you, and that gives it provenance and and um, yeah, makes it more genuine for more people. And as as, as Tommy also said to me, because he's such a knowledgeable guy, he said that um, that basically um, all the money, most of the money's made. Oh, that's Rod's phone. Rod's phone, yeah. That's his ringtone. No way. You could see yeah. him. Yeah. And um, anyway, so uh, he said, look, most of the money's made in private auction houses. It's not made on eBay for this rare musical kind of stuff like that. So now if this is the only copy of the concert that's professionally done, I'm not saying you know, it wasn't someone with a Super 8 camera or an early VHS that took, took some footage, but as you know, the sound's muffled, the, you know, it's blurry, it's too bright, it's too dark, where this is all all done. You know, it's, it's done like a, a football game would be where you've got multiple cameras, you know, camera yeah. one's in, okay, switch to camera one. So it's all it's all professionally done like that. Um, so the rarity, and if it's the only one in the world, what's it worth? Yeah, so that's the question I'm asking. I also contacted uh, an auction house in... Um, Without any, sorry to interrupt, I was going to say, without any precedent, there is no value. There is no way of knowing, is there? No. It's not. only worth as much as two collectors fighting over it have got in their wallets. It's Well, yeah. exactly it. And, and But as Tommy said, most of the money is made at auction houses. Hmm. Um, so it, it's it, that's where you have to send it. Now, um, we've got, I think it's Sotheby's here, but they only do fine art. Basically, that's all they do. They don't do anything else like this or have music auctions or anything like that or memorabilia. And that, that would be, you'd want you'd want it in something like that, I'd say, more so than eBay. Now, I, I know people can sell mega things on eBay, but am I selling myself short? And the other the other thing, too, is I'm also going halves with the, the, the cancer op shop. Okay. I was going to ask you, how did you... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's the deal oh, I had. Yeah. And so okay. I... Uh, and he he's just stoked. Like he goes, oh look, even if you can get a thousand bucks for it, that that'd be great. I'll take the five hundred. I said, no, no, no. This could be this could be worth twenty, fifty, sixty, like, eighty thousand. I don't know. Like you say, it, it's a one off, and you really there may be literally a handful of people in the world that are prepared to pay big money for that. So yeah. your task is to to let those people know. And once going back to that game that I had, yeah. Once I realised I think I have something special, I spent days messaging yeah. every forum, every Atari yeah. collector, every YouTuber, anyone yeah. I could think of who would talk about it and who yeah. would tweet it or rewatch yeah. it. And and by the time it, it it was finishing, we had it was up in the thousands of watches on. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> although, although I think a lot of them were just my subscribers, yeah. Um, yeah. but that that became my mentality that I've I've only got to find two people that really want it, so I'm going to spend a lot of time putting the message out there. But I think you are right because if you if you put it in a special music, well, they do that work for you. They will have an email list of thousands yeah. and that sort of thing, and it will be worldwide and. Mm. But yeah, that would be fascinating. Mm, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I'm kind of – I'm just waiting on to hear back from everyone, you know, whether Sony gets back to me, whether – I mean, I've only done it by email at this stage. Um, the auction house that Tommy talked about, they sold one of her jumpsuits that she wore on stage for 34000 US. So, Whoa. Um, and they did a lot of uh, actor and music style type. Because she was an actor and a singer at the same time, like bodyguard and 
there's a couple other movies she's done as well. So, you know, yeah. she does have that, that claim to fame. Be, being also African American too, you know, that, that that there might be a following there as well. And I, I don't, I mean, it is just the concert. It's not like, um, you know, unseen footage of an interview or, or anything like that. And I, 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 so, I, so I, I called the guy back up who, who, who carved it. And I said to her, I said, those Betamax tapes, can you grab them off the shelf and put them aside? Because basically in Australia, see, VHS, um, when, when Beta came out, it was released by Sony, obviously, and it was the best quality. And all the production companies only used Beta tapes. Then JVC produced VHS, which was a, a lesser quality in, in sound and picture, but they made it a lot cheaper and basically they got the market, okay? Um, and then VHS grew, but even when I was uh, when I was working in Melbourne for a computer company, we had to um, we had to put new computers in, I think it was Channel 7 or Channel 10, you know, like a, a big TV station in Australia, and um, they only used beta. Everything was beta. In Are you thinking that there may be recordings on the betas as well? So what I'm thinking, there's something on those beta tapes that could be uh, Frank Sinatra's concert maybe. Maybe yeah. they've transposed it from them onto this tape. So um, he's got those tapes put aside anyway, but I'm going to have to buy a Betamax player off of oh. eBay. It's not going to be cheap, but it's, um, just to see was what's it? on the stupid things. Yeah. Where, where um, was this, Andrew? Was this in uh, near you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, I'll see, where, you, see you in about an hour. All right. See ya. Oh, you've just yeah. muted yourself, by the way. Rob. Yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> you know, your phone rang too when you were out, Rod. Oh, did it? I was in the stupid dog was howling. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Um, I, I keep uh, missing this. Uh, and this has been asked a few times. So quickly, uh, question. I resell, but I don't have a store. This is my first Christmas as a reseller. What do you do with listings over Christmas as far as posting? Hope you can help. Um, well, for us, we will shorten our dispatch time. We tend to work on two-day dispatch. So getting close to Christmas, we'll go right down to same-day dispatch because people are panicking. They won't get things in time. So you can do that. I mean, you can stick to the same dispatch time if you like and, and uh, make yourself aware of last posting dates as well um and offer first class on next day because close to christmas people get desperate and worried that things won't turn up so you can tweak your dispatch tweak your dispatch times and maybe the services that you offer um that's about all i can say on that i don't know if you guys do anything different at christmas regarding your um, postage. once uh once we've hit that last day i put the store on holiday and turn it off for the next few days as well yeah well, I hope that helped anyway. Um, but yeah, that's that's really exciting, Drew. I mean, it, it's it's yeah, a bit it of oh, history. Uh, I did put it up on eBay for 20,000 uh, and then I took it back down again. So yeah, because uh, I thought, well, I mean, it might be a pie in the sky thing, it might not. But um, and see, the whole the whole theory is if because it's unseen footage, possibly, well, it's never been released footage that I can find on the internet. I've looked everywhere I've been. There was, um, all the footage it is is that from Clive James. Everyone's got on a China side. It's on you. It was on YouTube, but then that YouTube channel got pulled down, and the videos were all deleted. So uh, there's no link to that anymore. And there was the uh, the comments. I think it was the video went for one minute and thirty seconds, but the video I've got she plays for one hour and thirty eight minutes. Wow. So what I'm thinking is a production company like Sony um, could possibly do a best of live. Whitney Houston DVD and use this footage. Now, obviously, you know, if they're making $10 a DVD, they sell, you know, a million copies. You know, it's good money in them. How does it work? Let's say, so you're talking about selling the rights to reproduce it. No, but well, I, I, well. The original production company surely would just get in touch and say, hello. No, they're out of business. They're gone. Oh, okay. Well, that's no, they don't exist no more. No, no one exists, and there's no copyright on the videotape. Oh, the footage. Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's no text on it saying it's copyrighted. So as uh, far as I'm concerned, I own that copy, and I'm allowed to sell it. Like I own this, I'm allowed to sell that too. I don't, I don't, 
I'm going to reproduce it. I'm not going to copy it. I'm not going to produce a, a DVD from this because that would be piracy. But I own this, therefore it's physically mine. Same principle. Yeah. The dollars are different. And then Sony does have the rights to her music. So it's only Sony can reproduce this or someone can approach Sony to get um, authority to and pay them a royalty for it. Yeah, because they have intellectual yeah. property rights over this song. Yeah. But but it's say say if you were um, you know Kay West or someone like that who who, who liked Whitney Houston and, and you know she was only twenty five when she did this too so you know she was, she was pretty young I think her mother came out as a chaperone mm -hmm. um, so I think she really... it's an interesting one because mm. they must have been thinking about releasing it either broadcasting it or releasing it because you don't do a multi angle production that would cost exactly. thousands exactly. and thousands of an event. Yeah. But there was 44,000 people in the crowd. Mm. Um, and, and and did, um, there may have been a deal with tickets to this thing where you all get a, a complimentary copy of it. No, because it'd be all over YouTube. Right. There'd be sale copies everywhere. And don't forget oh. that there was only one night she was on and they filmed it that night. And then for everyone to get a VHS posted out in 1988. So your VHS tape would have probably cost you $9 each. Yeah. Like, it, it may be as simple then that the, they they hired this production company to to do the production to film it, and then yeah. that company went bust. Simple as that. And you got to understand, Sanctuary Coves is a massive marina for trillion dollar yachts. It's not just a little tie your dinghy up. You know, you, these big, massive, you know, hundred berth yachts pull up. You know, they're four stories high. They're, they're not a. They're, they're, they're not nickel and dime stuff. It's a massive massive marina and it's even today it's still worth lots and lots of money so my guess is they employed this production company to create this video for yeah. promotion or something like that but over time people are vhs tape boom 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 just in the bin that and they're probably thrown out there even copy so i was thinking even going to them asking would they like to to to, to purchase it as well but then they might get a legal issue that would be the only problem there so but um but I mean, yeah. Once again, it, it's um, yeah, it's one of those rare, rare finds, I guess. And as you said, what it's worth is what, what people are willing to pay. But um, if it's the only one on the planet, you know, it's like like a unicorn. If I had a unicorn, what's a unicorn worth? You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah. if I had my, if I had my under underwear from when I was four year olds, what are they worth? You know what I mean? Like it, <laughs> you kind of <laughs> how long's a piece of string? So yeah. yeah it's, it's kind of very interesting so um as I say, i'll just wait until I, I wait a week uh and then i'll start calling these people as well and see if i can get some um, now psa did say that they've got a long a long log of emails to go through and they've got about two to three weeks before um they'll actually um get to what i've requested them to value um mm. and the, the option house is just a matter of um um yeah hearing back from them or giving them a call so but i sent them well, photos well make sure you uh keep us updated because that'll be really fascinating to see what if anything comes from yeah that. i mean i, I think i think it's going to be months and months yeah uh, absolutely and, yeah i mean it's it's a completely different thing but i i've still got that collection of german nazi wartime photographs yes and i i actually was approached by people that either saw my video or heard about this collection. And I've, I've been made private offers, one of which I did actually accept and then it fell through. But I'm really yeah. in mind that that needs to be in a specialist international military auction. So that's going to yeah. be. The, tr the, the trouble is, though, that, that like eBay, you can't sell anything Nazi because they, 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 somehow everyone's offended. See, the thing is, Germany fought for their country what they thought was right at the time. You know, as as other countries did, like you know, the US went to Vietnam. They meant to do horrible things, but then, and so on and so forth. And war is just a horrible, horrible thing. It it brings out the worst in all people. You know what I mean? And like my my great grandfather, he was um, he was an engineer, and he was living in Germany in nineteen thirties, and he practiced to walk with the limp, so he didn't have to join the Nazi party. Then he migrated to Australia to get out. And he then started up an engineer, an engineering firm, and everything else. But 
the hate for the Jews was so great, as he said, that the Jews owned absolutely everything. You felt like you were a slave in your own country, and that's where the Nazi party came to power. They offered everyone a way out. Come and build ships for the Nazi party, and they built cruise ships and sold them worldwide and stuff, you know what I mean? And, and I don't condone what they've done, don't get me wrong, but there's always a reason why things happen, and it's always the victors that write the history, and the real history sometimes gets lost. Like America and the Civil War and how the Union was great and they conquered the South, you know what I mean? And then people don't like, you know, the, the, like the, um, what do they call it, the Dixie flag or, or whatever you call it. Isn't it the, the, is that the Federation flag that's now seen as a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah the, the diagonal cross one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Seen as a racist um, symbol. And, and some people from the North burn it as a form of hatred towards slavery. And right. all it was, all it was was the Union wanted all the colony powers out of their country, like England, France, Portugal, Spain, all that. They wanted them all out. And this is the way they united the country was through war. And then they thought, okay, well, let's get the Poms out of Canada. All right. So they went, they would march north to Canada and Canada flogged them. You don't hear anything in the record books of that. You know what I mean? They actually got trounced. Very good. Mm -hmm. Flogged, yeah, but you don't hear a word of that, you know, because no, no. uh, the Redcoats absolutely flogged them. Yeah. They were ready for them and they gave them heaps too. So, I mean, it is interesting. I, I got quite a lot of flack for, for being excited about my find when I found that German collection of photographs. Yeah, yeah but that's because, because see, people, people, yeah. don't, people, people swallow things wholeheartedly when they read a news report or they read a document that's that's biased. And you can see it in climate change. You can see it in all these different things. You know, they just believe it wholeheartedly. They can't, they can't research it. They can't think. Well, that doesn't quite make sense because this is happening. You know, the, the the point is, and the point I tried to make at the time was, regardless of your views, maybe you've got extreme views about it, or any other. Yeah. It, it's history, and it's even yeah. negative aspects of our history. In fact, I believe that we need to keep those memories alive about the negative things because if we don't teach about what yeah. happened. If we pretend the Holocaust didn't happen, we're not going to learn from that. And exactly. this document, and also yeah. this is a document of a of a kind of boots on the ground average Joe soldier and his time. He's not yeah. making the policies. He's not making the decisions. He he's 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 doing trying. what he thinks. He's doing what he thinks is right at the time yeah. for his country. And so yeah, it was an interesting response I got to that. You know, but yeah. I think. That was it. Yeah. it. It needs to be preserved. It, it's a it's a wonderful record well, of one chap. If we it's don't have like, we don't tell history how it was, it'll, it's doomed to repeat itself. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and 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 all these people saying, "Oh, shame on you, shame on you for having this or buying it or doing whatever." But it, it's, I mean, it's people people have this. You know, people like. Yeah, you know, have machine guns from the wall. I mean, yeah, look at look at that, that that other guy that comes on, you know. What's his Jamie. name? Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, man, he, he's crazy with all his war stuff. You know, like he camps out in front of these these swap meets and stuff so he can he can score some gear. But you know, and and it's a big interest to people. And I think I think that, you know, if you have an opinion and you feel strongly about something, you can't condemn other people for what they feel because Otherwise, we'd all be the same. You know what I mean? And we've got to have individual thinking and individual. Because because I don't agree with you, it means I don't hate you. And that's the problem. As soon as someone disagrees, I'll hate you. Then you know what I mean? And mm. that's the mentality we've got into now. That because I because I want to argue with you, my point, not to say oh you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about, but say why you're wrong. You know, give give reasons why I think there's holes in your story. Oh, what do you know now? You see that time and time again. Well, you're not a client science change expert. What would you know? Bang, shut the door. So they can't even debate the reasons why I'm trying to talk to them. You know what I mean? I'm not saying that climate change isn't a thing, but I think it's extreme to what they say it is. And and you know things need to change because we are a wasteful society. I think all appliances and cars should have 20 year warranty force these manufacturers to build in and actually make something as decent. Like you got fridges from 60 years ago still running today and you've got brand new fridges that last six years tops. Yeah. yeah 
was then made to fail. So you go buy another one and buy another one. Um, yeah, no, in, play a favor in. Like in, in sort of consumer demand, isn't there? I want a new thing. I want something new that's uh, yeah. that. Um, yeah. Getting something that does the job that's second hand and costs half the price. So, Abitoria, going back to the Christmas postage thing quickly, um, says, thanks. Just a bit worried about parcels going astray due to high demand. I really appreciate you taking the time to answer. You all have so much knowledge. I wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, as long as you post it out before the last post, it's yeah. that's all you can do. And if you're going to worry about it not turning up, that's out of your hands, really. So do your best and get things in the post as soon as possible. And Yeah. Do you, do you have like do you have like a an express post option over there like where you can send stuff it gets like the next day or something over just normal post yeah well we have second class and first class uh first class yeah. is meant to be takes a day second class is two to three days i think yeah, but sure. then you have special delivery which is guaranteed by either 9 a.m yeah. or 1 p.m i think it is you can choose so there's plenty but, of options but when people buy stuff two days before Christmas comes and they need it for Christmas and then it arrives a week later because the postal service is flooded with presents and cards and stuff going left, right and centre. I mean, shame on that person for buying it. You know, <laughs> like you left your run a bit late. And yeah. But if you have that expressed option, I think, you know, maybe if they select with that, that, that gets kind of yeah, out of the troubles. So. Sometimes here in the UK and it happened, I don't know, what was this now, about five years ago maybe, the weather comes into play. And we had really, really bad snow and everything went to pot and the back yeah. was just piles of stuff. Nothing got there on time and it was chaos for the for the internet selling market, you know. Nothing was arriving. <laughs> yeah, I, we, same here. Like I mean, we're a country of fire and flood. I mean, it's it's just the norm. Like when you see massive bushfires in Australia, it's just what it is. Australia's always had we always get like ten years of dry and ten years of wet basically in a nutshell and the dry has gone a little bit longer this time you know but then the floods will come again you know like in 2012 brisbane flooded this is a major capital city of four million people you know everyone along the river got flooded out because they it hadn't rained in a while the dot the dam was filling and there was a and weather bureau said look there's a ton of rain coming <coughs> yeah, it monsoon type rain so it just rains day in day out but it's like 20 or 30 mil every hour and it rained for like three or four days and everything is saturated so just it's a pure runoff nothing gets absorbed in the ground and uh then they said oh no the dam's dam's too full we have to open it the river was full all the gutters were full they opened the dam it just flooded the whole town yeah so poor management on on, on their part wow. um so and then towns full i think this year i think yeah it was the rainfall this year they had over a meter and a half of rain in a day um and and they the same thing had to open the dam flooded the town you know but the trouble is though then any mail and parcels trying to get that way or up because our road infrastructures we only have like kind of one highway and all the rest are little back roads and even when the flood water goes down you still got to wait two or three days for the ground to dry out so if you start driving over the roads they all break up so they, they want to kind of conserve the roads as well by not letting big trucks on them apart from emergency services, and that's about it. And see, in New Zealand, when the government gets a road built, if you you say you're a road builder, I don't know, like Fulton Hogan or some company that builds roads, um, you have to guarantee and look after that road maintenance for the next 20 years. So they build it right. In Australia, they just slap down a road, falls apart in two years, then the government has yep. to pay them. Same as happens there. Exactly. And that's the problem. You, you got they've got to start putting the onus back on these suppliers, you know, and make legislate something or put a tender out saying you must fix and repair this road for the next twenty years. And suppose that taking all the instead of using X Y Z gravel, you know, they, they use a high high grade gravel, they use some kind of binder that waterproofs it as well, stops it from expanding with ice and 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 water, um, and, and actually make the road properly at a premium price. But then if the road doesn't fall apart in five years, it saves all of us money, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know about you guys. I know you've got a lot of um, congestion taxes and, and tolls and stuff like that if you drive through London and whatnot. But in Australia, it seems to be the norm that all the state governments are so broke or so in debt. As soon as they build any kind of new infrastructure as far as highways, then they put a toll on it. But right. the toll is all owned by a hedge fund 
the road's owned by a hedge fund. So that tile will never come off that road forever and ever. Oh, really? That's yeah. And they just keep jacking the price up, jacking the price up. So the government gets the GST. But the government doesn't understand that if they went and borrowed the billions of dollars, built the massive road infrastructure, put a toll on it, and then lowered the toll once the road was paid off, lower the toll by half. People <coughs> have to pay half, right? And then I do another one. And then this one will supplement this one. And then these two will supplement that one, and so on and so forth. Now in Melbourne, they've got the Yarra River, and there's a massive port there with big cargo ships coming. So they, they, they needed a bridge. So they built what they call the Westgate Bridge. And it was a toll road. 20 years the toll was on. You, you went through, you paid your dollar ten or whatever it was back then. Once the once the toll was uh, once the bridge was all paid for, they took all the toll booths off. Yeah, that's recently happened in in the UK near Bristol. There's the Seven Bridge that connects uh, yeah. Southwest England with, with Wales, and they've yeah. recently taken the toll off that completely. Yeah, yeah, and that's been a toll they paid for it for for decades. I mean, I remember going there in 1994, and the toll was on then, mm. and it's just yeah. been lifted. And there's yeah. also the, the massive uh, Q, Queen Elizabeth Bridge in Dartford, um, just east of London. Mm. Massive, massive bridge, and that's a toll still, which they've automated yeah. now, which is good. So it just reads your number plate, and if you haven't paid, they'll bill you or they'll fine you. So it's that's all right. Right. fine, yeah. We've got one of those around here to get across the Mersey. Mm. And yeah, they're just horrendous because. Uh, yeah, yeah we've, got these, we've got these tags you put on the windscreen. And there's a set that it reads it when you go past. Right. And then they correlate that with your number plate. But if you don't have an account, they send you a bill. No, they, they send you, sorry, you got three days to pay the toll. So you got to call them up, give me a red Joe, and then they pay, you pay it manually. If you don't do it in three days, they send you a bill with an excess charge. Mm -hmm. Or you just have one of these go things that go past, and every time you go past, it goes beep, and just charges your account, takes it off your credit card. Yeah, most of the, the UK ones are now NPR, so yeah. APR, whatever it's automatic number plate recognition. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. When we were in Florida last year, it's like you get on a freeway and you're told, you get off it, you're told, you get it's like everywhere in Florida. It's, it was driving me nuts. Yeah. You have to carry small change around with you. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's the trouble with, I mean, yeah. America is what it is, but you know they 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 all pull in different directions. I guess as far as their their, their states are concerned, there's no consistency. Yeah, right. that's I've got to go to bed now, chaps. All right, all right. tomorrow. All right, see. It's a pleasure to speak to you all. Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Rod. Thanks, Drew. Pleasure. No. See you I'll see you at the weekend. Yeah, see you Saturday. You going <laughs> polishing your second place podium. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not listening to these lies. <laughs> oh no! Told get, you last uh, night you're get, wearing the wood out on the floor of that second place. Get a proper, get a proper, get a proper poll going. Not, not these fake ones that only forty people can enter. Night, everyone. Good night. Good night. People were requesting. I think you were wandering around with a guitar. Uh -huh. uh, Ke Kevin says, "Play us a tune, Pommy." <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I knew I knew Andrew was telling you about the story of the this VHS, so I thought, all right, because because I'm up to speed with it, I thought I'll get a few bits done. And I turned around and realised I've got two guitars up there which aren't listed. I pulled them off; there's about an inch of dust on them. Oh man! And I've, I've just put this. On me, but this is one of them ice packs I was telling you about before. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it's so nice. I mean, I sit here with it and kill your head down, but look right, it's wonk. You know, look. Oh, oh. Well, Eric says that uh, it's odd that when Drew starts talking, <laughs> Rod goes on a walkabout. Oh, no, I, I, it's only because I knew the story, Eric. I, 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 I'm up to speed with it. That's I, I, Tommy. Tommy sent me a message to tell Andrew to see about, you know talking about it so i knew it was coming so that's why i thought i'll get i'll get some packing and bits done so yeah and and look if, if anyone's been in a similar situation where they had something pretty rare i know nick has obviously and what he did but yeah other stories would be greatly appreciated too uh kevin said rod 
I need to get some of those ice packs to sell on eBay for the two weeks of hot weather in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks? Have they extended it? We, oh. had a good, we had a good run this year. It was too hot, though. We couldn't cope, you know. Oh, <laughs> come on. Or the other. We, oh, we I, saw you, I saw you with them fans on in, in your summer, and I'm like, it must be cold. He's got the heater going. Yeah. And, I mean, I, get 24, did it? Window open, fan on, fans blown on my Mac because it was just boiling over. And yeah, oh, man. I, I heard you talking about that the other day about your computer, and I thought, well, mine doesn't seem to struggle heat wise, and yet it's a lot hotter here. I thought, well, mm. I don't, know. don't know. Mine, we're we're looking at replacing them now. Anyway, we're we're gonna, you know, spend some spend some cash and update our Mac because. Yeah, it's slowing down. Do you remember a good few years ago, uh, Nick, there was a guy, I think he was called Neil, and he used to post a lot when, obviously, when you had the Facebook group and you know, take him down, but Neil, he used to do Instagram. Was it Neil Borden? That's it. I couldn't remember his surname. Neil Borden, yeah. Yeah. And he used to do Instagram as well, I think. I'm not sure. Um, but he used to sell a lot of uh, ponchos. That seemed to be his thing, selling rain ponchos. Is yep. he still around the, the reselling community over there? Because there's a comment in here which just reminded me about it. And I thought, I've not heard him for a while. And I wonder if he's still live well, and kicking. If I remember rightly, he there was a section of our community that got very anti-YouTube. Um, yeah sharing and talking about it and i think he was kind of along those lines but he oh. still he still dipped into our what was our facebook group yeah. uh, but i i don't know i assume he's still well he had if i remember rightly i think it was him who had a welly boot company that i, I believe they made a lot of money on and then sold it on i think and then like you say he got into importing ponchos in massive bulk and selling yeah. them to uh, festivals and other companies to sell on yeah, fascinating stuff. But I haven't spoken to him for years. No, he's not part of my little circles that I chat to anymore. Yeah. He's he's certainly never watching my videos or commenting. So, no, I just I never see him, you know, in, on any any Facebook posts. Or, I just thought, oh, I wonder if he's still still around. You know, he's. Uh, yeah. um, yes, Karen, I shipped to the UK, but. It's too exp It's very expensive. Uh, something five hundred grams can cost anything like twenty eight dollars, and it's what's that about fourteen? Yeah, I think it's twenty two without tracking, twenty eight with tracking. Mm. Abitoria thirty three says, Rod, it's so strange seeing you looking so hot. I've got the fire going here in the UK. Oh. I make them. Oh. oh, I I misinterpreted the first half of that. <laughs> oh. You're looking hot, Rod. Hey. Oh, and that's not the first time it's been said this morning, is it, Drew? <laughs> he, he's still got it. It never went away. <laughs> um, Florida wants to take advantage of travellers. Yeah, we felt like we were being fleeced driving around there. Man. So I've driven there before, back in uh 2000 but i swear there was like 10 times as many tolls this time they've really upped their game i've never been to florida um but uh yeah i was i lived in good night connecticut for a while but never went to florida no where is uh, connecticut's a state i've never been to is that where is that it's on the east coast. Oh, okay. It's, it's um. So south I'm of probably New York. Gonna get, well, I'm probably going to get slated here by the Americans in the chat. Where I think it's somewhere near New York, but it's probably about three hours away from it, something by plane. I'm not entirely, <laughs> yeah. not entirely sure. Well, near as as compared to yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, re I remember flying from JFK to East Hartford, uh, Connecticut. On a Saab um, jet stream type thing, whatever it was, and it was the most horrendous flight I've ever had in my life. 
Um, you know that 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 film uh, airplane where they're all chanting. You got the monks chanting, and, and then you've got the girl in, on the hospital bed with a nun with a guitar. And well, I, it, New JFK Airport is just that was my leaving impression of it. It's just all weirdos in there. <laughs> I've flown out of there. I, I don't. I don't have that memory. <laughs> yeah, you, you. You'd be with your family though, wouldn't you? I was on my own. I well, mean, vulnerable. No. <laughs> when I, the only time I flew out of JFK, I was on my own. I, that's when I worked over there many moons ago. Ninety four. That would have been. Well, you worked in. You actually worked in America. Well, yeah, only know. for a summer. It was like a, I was a student at the time, and oh. one summer when I was. Uh, doing my degree course I signed up for what they call Camp America um, yeah. if you have certain skill sets you can sign up to teach whatever and I, I used to do a lot of sailing so I signed up as a sailing instructor and um, flew out to New York and I was like a last minute kind of guy and and they they weren't sure exactly where I was going I landed in New York and I got on a bus and I still didn't know where the camp was and it was in Delaware that's uh, where that well, Tommy lives, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, okay. He lives in Delaware. Yeah. And, and I spent the most fantastic summer of my life, you know, meeting Americans. And I was, what was I, 19. So I was illegal to drink, but we found a bar we could all get, all get served in. And oh, it was just so much fun. And just having a British accent was like a, like, I don't know, yeah. the, the Americans were falling over us, the, the girls. It was quite a summer. Well, I had I had girls falling over me when I was in America, but there was it was in a bar with, with uh, there was two lesbians and um, the yeah the playing playing in pool, and I think I might have told this story before, but we we were playing the English pool rules, they were playing American. It got a bit hectic and ended up fighting with two lesbians. I think I got my backside well and truly kicked that night. Beaten up by a girl, eh, Rod? Yeah. <laughs> Cover me in chocolate and throw me to the left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, that was, that was the first time I ever went to New York. We, were, we went on a day trip from where our, where our camp was and, um, and did New York. And then I met a guy who, who was, was actually working on our camp. And he lived in Brooklyn. And I got to know him really well in the end. And he said, I had about a month after where what you do traditionally is you just go traveling. You spend some of the money and you, you go traveling. So this guy said, well, come to New York and stay at my house. We had this massive basement. So we basically set up in there and that was our home for a week. Uh, me and this other guy from London I met called Alex. And we went up the World Trade Center because obviously it's still standing in 94. Jeez. And went to Liberty Island, Statue of Liberty, all that stuff. It was just like a dream. I was, oh, that's brilliant. Yeah. I like like Adam's comment there, uh, watch your 1421. Come <laughs> 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 to America. Yeah. <laughs> shorts. The budgie, budgie smugglers. Yeah. When I was when I was working there, the first two days, the foreman of the place, it was only a small machine shop, and he, he picked me up in the morning, something to work and drop me off. And it was literally about a ten minute drive in the car. And the next day, like he said, you've got to get this bus from this bus stop and that'll drop you off outside the the factories, which I did the first day, and that was great. The second day I got on the bus, but it went a completely different way, and apparently they alternated the routes. And I just didn't know where I was going, so I ended up staying on this bus and I ended up crossing the Connecticut River. And and the bus driver sort of came to it must have been his end of stop or something. And and he turned around to me and he said, um, Do you know where you go where you need to go? And I told him, and he says, Oh, he says, You'll have to wait on the bus for about 10 minutes till we, we turn around. He says, Don't get out. I'm not not letting you get out on this side. I'm like, all right, why? And he says, you basically, he said, you're on the wrong side of town. And I was like, where am I? You know, what kind of place is this? Hmm. And that really freaked me out, that, you know. So I, I 
sat on this bus making sure as hell the door was shut. Yeah. And uh, this other relief driver or something came on and drove back over the river and well it's nightmare. But it just but that was only in a short distance. I'm kind of think I remember thinking at the time, you know, it's like I, I really should what you know wise up a bit and quick. Well, I, I had a bit of a moment like that. So this guy who lived in Brooklyn, his, his name was Sean, he, he had driven there. So he, he said, Nick, Nick, you've got to come and stay in New York. I'll show you all the sites, blah, blah, blah. So he obviously had his car, and he had actually left earlier than we did. So he he's driven back to New York, and he, and he said, yeah, just get this such and such Greyhound bus and I'll get to this station and just get the uh, the underground, or as they call it, the – what do they call it, actually? What do they call it in New York? Subway. So yeah. it was like get the six number six train or whatever. But by the time we'd caught this bus to New York, it was about midnight. And then we go down into the subway in New York and we didn't know what the hell we were doing. And then get a subway all the way from Manhattan to Brooklyn. And it was just, it felt so dodgy. You know what I mean? And then we yeah. stepped out of the subway in brooklyn with it with a like penciled little map on a piece of paper wandering around it was by like 1 a.m then or something <laughs> with rucksacks looking like tourists we were Jeez. yeah but these have been a completely different story it's ending well when you're 19 and you're kind of fearless you just you just do it don't you and then you you end up in a situation and then suddenly it kicks in it's like okay i don't feel safe i really don't feel safe yeah yeah, yeah. Jesus. Right. Well, I think I'm going to. Uh, do yeah, some... I'm going to go and have a shower. Actually, I'm. I think I need to cool down. Wish me dam was still full. I think I'd have jumped in that. <laughs> oh, hi, JT. We're, we're just about to wrap up because I need to, to do a little bit of work and then go to bed. I was, I was going to be so productive tonight and then I went live and my productivity just uh, diminished to nothing. <laughs> well, you, when you said I'm, I'm testing some um, consoles, do you, do you fancy going live? And Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll see what you're testing. You did free and sat down. <laughs> well, I did that, but the idea was to get them listed or packed up to go to Amazon. So I kind of... The intention was to go live for like half an hour, have a chat and then lift off. But you know yeah. what? You just get into the chat, don't you? We'll yeah. blame Sam. She's not here. We'll blame Sam. Yeah, it's all Sam's fault. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there, lads. And uh, Talk to you guys. Uh, thanks for having us. No, it's been a pleasure. Uh, mm. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, I'll see you. I don't know when. Ne next. Oh yes, time. it's a big, big event this weekend, isn't it? Don't forget to uh, live stream from this. Yeah, yeah. yeah we want some live stream. Yeah, okay. We will try and try and endeavour to do that. If if we can't, but I'm sure we'll be able to. There'll be various vlogs on various channels, I'm sure. Of, uh, yeah, drunk, I drunk said, yeah, I think Andrew said he was going to uh, do some live streaming. He won't pass that opportunity up. He's probably still listening there. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, right. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye. Right. Bye-bye.